All right, the stream is live. Hello, everyone. I'm Christiana Ellis. Normally at this time, actually, today is not what our normal day would be, but we had originally planned to play some D&D &D tonight with adventure on so many levels, but uh, we had a few people still not feeling well, and so instead, I'm going to be playing more of an awesome tabletop RPG called Iron Sworn. Now, I've played a little bit of that in a previous session, but if you didn't watch that, don't worry. I'm going to explain anything that you need to know here. And uh, we're just going to hopefully have some fun in a sort of Viking-ish setting and swearing vows and trying to fulfill them, but boy, it's hard. You know, we got a rough time of it sometimes. There's complications out there in the world. Okay, so... First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about uh, what, where we are in the story, and then we'll cover very briefly the mechanics of how the roles work in this game, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So, first and foremost, let's talk about truths of the world. Now, these are all things that I established in the session zero world building stuff in the first session but I'll just read the results of it now truths about the world the old world could no longer sustain us we were too large in number we had felled the forests our crops withered in the barren ground the cities and villages overflowed with desperate hungry people petty kings battled for scraps we cast our fate to the sea and found the Iron Lands, a new world, a fresh start. Now, iron is important in this, but why? Iron, uh, so the iron truth is the weather is bleak, rain and wind sweep in from the ocean, the winters are long and bitter. One of the first settlers complained, only those made of iron dare live in this foul place, and thus... The Iron Lands were named. Legacies. Before the Iron Landers, before even the firstborn, another people lived here. Their ancient ruins are found throughout the Iron Lands. Communities. We live in communities called circles. These are settlements ranging in size from a steading with a few families to a village of several hundred. Some circles belong to nomadic folk. Some powerful circles might include a cluster of settlements we trade and sometimes feud with other circles. Leaders. Leadership is as varied as the people. Some communities are governed by the head of a powerful family or they have a council of elders who make decisions and settle disputes. In others, the priests hold sway. For some, it's duels in the circle that decide. Now, that's important because it relates to my character, Chenda's overall, you know, uh, defining quest, which is that, you know, the old ways failed us in the old world. And so we now must find a new way to live, and my character their life goal, so to speak, is to try to learn how the firstborn live. But that's, uh, you know, we're going to learn a little bit more about what the status of the firstborn is in a moment. So defense here in the Iron Lands, supplies are too precious, uh, uh, and the lands are too sparsely populated to support organized fighting forces. When a community is threatened, the people stand together to protect their own. Mysticism. Some still find comfort in the old ways. They call on mystics to divine the fortune of their newborn or ask them to perform rituals to invoke a bountiful harvest. Some others act out of fear against those who they suspect of having power. However, most folk believe true magic, if it ever existed, is, gone, is lost to us now. Religion. A few Ironlanders still make signs or mumble prayers out of habit or tradition, but most believe the gods long ago abandoned us. Firstborn, which includes like elves and trolls and giants and stuff. The firstborn live in isolation and are fiercely protective of their own lands, so we don't really know very much about them. Beasts, beasts of all sorts, 
roam the Ironlands. They dwell primarily in the reaches, but range into settled lands to hunt. There they often prey on cattle, but attacks on travelers, caravans, or even settlements are not uncommon. And then horrors. We are wary of dark forests and deep waterways, for monsters lurk in those places. In the depths of the long night, when all is wreathed in darkness, only fools venture beyond their homes. So that's the truths about the world. So let's talk a little bit about who my character is and uh, what you know happened in the last session, where we are now, how we move forward. We're not going to belabor every single point uh, in and out of the last session because it was a long session and it's not all relevant anyway. Um, but so our character is named Chenda. And if you look on the character sheet here, um, we're going to just quickly talk through it. The five sort of stats, there's edge, which is like speed and precision, iron, strength, you know, uh, you know, the fighting, uh, heart, you know, is empathy and bravery and courage, uh, shadow, which would be sneakiness and deception and, uh, stealth and then wits intelligence, right? <clears throat> So uh, a plus three is as high as you can ever get in those. And so my character's primary strength is heart, followed by iron and wits. Bonds is something that's important for the overall game, is that you uh, try to forge bonds with other people, ideally because if you ever wanted to retire a character, the more bonds they have made with other people, the more likely they are to get the outcome that they want. Now, we have the momentum tracker on the left-hand side of the screen here. Uh, so that is something that plays into the mechanics, which we'll talk more about. And right now, my momentum is at plus four, uh, which you may be able to see on the left-hand side of the screen here. On the right-hand side of the character sheet, we have my health currently at plus four, spirit currently at plus three, and supply currently at plus one. Now, health is pretty straightforward. It's, you know, physical well-being. Spirit is like emotional state. And then supply is an abstracted reflection of just do you have food, water, good boots, all those generic sorts of things. It's all kind of abstracted as a supply tracker. And that is uh, relevant for some of the moves that you need to make. Uh, there's debilities here, uh, wounded, shaken, unprepared, encumbered, cursed, tormented, maimed, corrupted. I don't have any of those at the moment, so we'll, we'll talk more about those if they come up. Now, vows is the big part of how the overall questing works and how the primary, you know, mechanic of the game works is that you're designed to uh, try to make vows to people and then fulfill them, and you use a progress tracker. So my overall vow, learn the ways of the firstborn, which was sworn on my iron sword. It's an epic vow, which means that it would take a really, really long time. The idea is that you may never even make any progress on that one. It just kind of informs the character, but it would be nice to build in from here, here and there. But let's talk about my next level quest here. Escort Katya and reach an agreement with Grimland. This one on an iron ring. You can see I have two boxes out of ten filled out on the progress. It's a dangerous, which means of the five levels, that's how difficult it's meant to be. However, that's where we get into what happened last time, uh, and it's a lot more complicated than that. But let's briefly talk about, um, oh, you know what? I, there's This is new. I think they've added this to the character sheet, this assets tab. So I should go ahead and add that here. Um, I should add that because I currently just have it in my notes somewhere else. Uh, let me try to find out where I put that. Okay. Yeah, so my notes, uh, my, so when you make your character, you choose three assets. And that's kind of how you're, you're building your character. And so I chose, uh, let's see. Oh, look at that. They're all just right in there. 
So I chose the herbalist path. Nice. It's all just right there. That's excellent. That's new since the last time I played, and I'm very happy to see that. That's wonderful. So what you can see here is that because my character is studied in herbalism, uh, when you attempt to heal using, uh, which is a move, using herbal remedies and you have at least plus one supply, you may choose one and you decide whether you want to add two to your roll or if you get a hit, take or give an additional plus one health. And that came in very handy uh, at one point. So let's add my other two assets here. Um, I was also, I, let's see, I'm trying to remember. I was a sword master, I believe. Yeah, com which is a combat talent. And sword master. And I actually didn't end up using that very much because of uh, something that I'll get more into when we talk about the mechanics. If, but so for each of these assets, you start with only having one of the three items. So when you strike or clash and burn momentum to improve your result, you in inflict plus two harm, uh, which is useful. But as you can see, it requires you to burn momentum, which requires you to have momentum to burn, which was part of the difficulty I had last time. So let's add the third one that I had, which was trying to remember what it was. It's been a little while since I played this one. Um, bonded, I believe. Yeah, that's what it was. I had also chosen a bonded path. And with that, when you make a move which gives you an add for sharing a bond, add plus one more. So those are my, my assets for my character. And <clears throat> so as uh, so let, let's talk now about the uh, you know the the uh, sorry um, let's talk about the rules mechanics I'm trying to remember where that page was all right the basics here we go the action roll so the way rolls work in Iron Sworn is that you roll the action die, which is a d6, and the challenge die, which are two, each a d10. And so the idea is that you have various modifiers based on what you're rolling. So if I were going to roll heart, I'd roll the d6 plus 3, and then I would roll it against two d10s. And depending, so the you know let's say I rolled the d6 and it was a 3, and I add my three, and that made a total of six, that would mean that I then compare that to the two d10s. If I'm higher than both, strong hit. If I'm higher than one but lower than the other, weak hit, lower than both, miss. And different moves have different results depending on what you know you get. And then the momentum question is that let's say one of the d10s, one of the challenge dice, was a three. And if my role was also, let's say my action score was also a three, which doesn't beat the challenge dice of three, and that would mean that I might have a miss or a weak hit. But if I have plus four momentum, I can cancel that three challenge die and improve my result. And so we'll we'll do more with that if we get to it. But that's those are the the basics there. And so in when you're playing the game, you have all of these different moves you can make. Uh, that's probably small to see on the screen. I wonder if there's a better way to present that. Anyway, I'm going to leave it for now. But uh, in any event, one of the things that I'll mention right now is that the PDF version of this game is free. It is free. It is at ironswornrpg.com, and it's a great game. You should check it out. So if you wanted to see this PDF a little better, you could easily go download it there. But in the meantime, let's talk now about um, what actually happened to my character, Chenda, on her previous attempt to, you know, fulfill this mission. Escort Katya to Grimland for negotiations. Well, 
here's the problem. Katya was a scout who was uh, disfigured. She came from a town, uh, this was the town of Greyhope, which you can see on the map here. Uh, the, the town of Greyhope is racked with disease, has leaders that are have kind of walled themselves off from everyone else in order to avoid this disease. Many people are dying, but they're also feuding with their neighbor uh, place of Grimland, which you can see the northernmost X on the map there. And we had, uh, you know, you know, Katya, this scout, was supposed to go there and negotiate uh, an agreement uh, to stop the feuding. But she had herself caught this disease, and though she was recovering, she was still too weak to travel on her own. And so that's where my character, Chinda, came in, was going to escort them to Grimland. We had a brief side trip to Messias's Hill, which you can see as the blue X there, because Messias was... Katya's friend, lover, mm -hmm. who had died from this illness and needed to be buried. And we had a lot of trouble even just getting there. But we then made our way through. We stopped at a couple of other places, Froststead, Elfbrook. We had a lot of trouble, honestly, getting to Grimland in the first place. It was a very difficult journey. And we learned a couple of things along the way. One is that there seems to be a theme of people being a little bit more into occult magic than we would have previously thought was, like, a thing. Also, Katya, as she continues to recover from this illness, has found that she seems to have a strength that she didn't before. What's going on there? And then, worst of all, when we arrive at Grimland, we find it utterly deserted. Nobody there. Oh no. So, what that means is that we have made, we've marked progress on our vow, escort Katya, because we got Katya to the location of Grimland, but there's nobody there. So we don't know, it's like, do we still need to negotiate with with them what's going on and so we have not been able to complete uh, the negotiations and in particular uh, this journey to Grimland uh, became something that much more difficult and uh, extreme we have to try to determine we, what we've discovered is that finding the people of Grimland is going to be a much, much larger ordeal. And so uh, what we ended up with, just following the mechanics of the game, is that this journey to Grimland and save the people, and, or, and find, let's see, and let's say and save the people is kind of what the new journey there would reflect is now an extreme quest which means that like is that practical to even try to do i don't know well we're gonna have to kind of decide how to handle that right because that's now a bigger deal than the original quest but in the meantime katya and i have only just arrived at this settlement and it is kind of a nightmare um, because now nobody is there. And so this new vow, dangerous instead of troublesome, um, is we had established that we needed some additional markers of what was going on. We need to figure out where the people of Grimland went, like what happened to them. We need to ensure that there is no ongoing threat to Grey Hope and then return to Grey Hope. And that's what we need to do to fulfill that original vow. And the discovery of what happened, like find the people of Grimland and like maybe save them would be a much larger ordeal that we would deal with separately. So 
first and foremost, we need to figure out are there actually any people left? Are they all gone or are there any stragglers? And so this is where we're going to ask the Oracle. The Oracles are something that is a really neat feature of this game. And what it does is give you the ability to do these solo play things by rolling the you know percentile dice and and having using all of these fancy tables to help you determine what's going on. So I think that what we're going to do is um, I, I've thought a, I thought a little bit about this since the last time we played. So uh, we need to a determine are there any people at all left to talk to? Like, did, is there a survivor left behind who might have some information? We want to know. Uh, so let's let's first just determine that. And I would think that this was a reasonably sized place and almost no matter what could have happened, the idea that there would have been absolutely no one left seems less likely to me. So when you have a yes or no question like that, the way they suggest doing the oracle is <clears throat> you uh, basically choose of the two options, which one seems the most likely. And then you essentially give a three out of four chance to the likely result and a one out of four to the unlikely one. So if we say, oh, oracle, tell us, are there any survivors left? Is there anyone left that we can ask about what happened? Uh, we're going to roll D100. And if we have uh, a result of 26 or higher, that means that there is someone left behind. And it doesn't tell us what state they'll be in or what, in, what they might have to say. Just, is there someone we can find? Or uh, is, is it completely deserted? So let's see. 83. Okay, so that means there's someone here. And I think that as we are searching through and looking around at the village, let's try to, let's use some more of the oracle tables to tell us who, who this person is. So some of these oracle tables include things like character role, character goal, character descriptors, and names. So let's say character role, we're going to do a role for the, yeah, for character role, character goal, let's leave that one alone because we're going to, their goal presumably will, will follow from whatever else we decide about them. So we're going to do uh, a role for character role, uh, two roles for character descriptor, and then one for name. So that's going to be four D100s. So all right, so first looking at these tables, whoops. Yeah. Okay, for so for character role, was 13, so that would mean that this was a minor. So, uh, minor as in the occupation, not the age. And so this minor, uh, perhaps the reason they, they, were, they were out at the mine when, when everything went down. Um, all right, and then we have two character descriptors, 33 and 26. They are strong and they are ambitious. Interesting. Okay. And the name, 55. Uh, this is actually, there's, I always forget there's two names. Let's use the second one. Matic. Okay. Okay. So let's, um, let, I'm, I have to keep all my notes here. So. Um, in my people and places notes, 
uh, it just occurred to me that the way I have the screen set up, you guys are not going to necessarily see these um, places where I'm adding my notes. Um, you know what? Hmm. Let's let's change that up. Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, I'll just, never mind. You guys, uh, you don't, you don't need to see my notes. You don't need to see my notes. I'm just telling you what I'm saying anyway, uh, what I'm writing anyway. So, here at Grim Hope, we've met, um, you know, only person left is Matic, who is strong and ambitious. Uh, and he was a minor. So let's ask the oracle um, with, uh, say, it's most likely that he was away from the town when it all happened, which might mean he knows less about uh, what happened. Or if uh, it's 20, 25 or lower, then he was there when it happened. Okay, 89, so that means that he was away for when it happened. So we find him poking through the remnants of this, uh, you know, this deserted village, and we say, hey, you, what the hell? Where's, where are all the people of Grimland? And so at this point, um, I think what we want to try to do is a compel move. Um, and in this context, in this game, a compel move doesn't necessarily mean <clears throat> like a, uh, an aggressive intimidation. It could mean that. But compel means in any way that you might try to persuade someone or convince them to do what you want. And in this case, what we're going to try to do is have him tell us what he knows. Right? And so, um, looking at our move here, compel, when you attempt to persuade someone to do something, envision your approach and roll. If you are charming, pacifying, bantering, or convincing, roll plus heart. Um, and that's, that's, you know, what we're going to try to do. So let's go ahead and make our first roll of the session tonight. I'm going to roll plus heart. Uh, oops, I'm adjusting stuff and it's moving things around. Okay, um, so we got a, only a one on the D6, but plus three makes a four. And then the challenge dice were a one and a four, which means it's only a weak hit. So if we look at the rules for compel, on a weak hit, it's uh, you can they'll do what you want or share what they know, but they ask something of you in return. Envision what they want. So let's say what what do they want? Well, may, maybe they they either are frightened because of. You know, like I, you know, we learned that Matic is strong and ambitious, right? But at the same time, even an ambitious person has got to be wary of like their whole town is gone. They probably had family there, friends, like what, you know, ambitious, like, oh boy, free town all to myself. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, welcome, uh, Prince Justin. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better, actually. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily 100%, but compared to the last week or so, a lot better. Um, so if, uh, if Matic is, is, is strong, he, he's maybe, like, it's one thing to say he's strong, but suddenly by himself in a dangerous wilderness when something has happened to the whole rest of the town... Uh, you know, he probably wants some kind of uh, assistance. Maybe he needs to be escorted to 
another nearby uh, circle, you know, to, uh, you know, for, for safety. Um, so maybe, maybe we have to promise, how about this? We have to swear an iron vow that we will escort him to some other place where there are other people where he could be, uh, you know, at least maybe find a, a place to be, assuming that, you know, we're not getting the people of Grimland back. And so we're going to try swearing an iron vow to do that. And that'll be a, a, a small vow. Um, so the, if we look for swearing an iron vow, here we go. When we swear an iron vow, uh, to complete a quest, uh, we're going to write the vow and give the quest a rank, and then we're going to roll plus heart. And we don't have a bond there yet, but we're going to do what we can. So we're going to roll. Uh, well, first let's make the vow. Escort Matic to the nearest circle. And that's going to be just troublesome because we actually just came from a place called Froststead, which um, was actually sort of a thieves, um, thieves bandits hideout. Maybe we give uh, Matic the choice whether he wants to go to Elfbrook which was a bunch of kids who ran away from home trying to make their own thing, or Froststead, which was a bandit out camp. So we'll let him pick which one of those he wants to go to. But that's going to be uh, troublesome. So let's going to try rolling heart for, uh, for this. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so I think I was just trying to decide if I could justify doing a secure and advantage roll on this first. Uh, this was something that I found um, subsequent to my last session is that using the secure and advantage move to help you build momentum gives you much better chance of being able to burn the momentum to, to improve your result. And that's going to make a big difference in how good a day you're having in this game. <laughs> so I think I think let's say we're going to I'm going to do a secure and advantage roll with heart that the goal here is that we're trying to convince him that we are capable having just been to those places and we can describe two different places that he could maybe go and that you know between me and Katya we can essentially persuade him yes this is something we can do for you. So I'm going to do a, a with heart secure an advantage roll first before we swear, swear this vow. So with, with heart, let's see, we got, uh, <laughs> okay. So we wrote, we got an eight against challenge dice of uh, 10 and 4. So that is a weak hit on secure and advantage, which is better than a weak hit for swearing an iron vow. So on a weak hit with um, secure and advantage, your advantage is short-lived. You take plus one momentum. And so that doesn't help us a whole lot, but it gives us one more momentum up to plus five, which is better than not having done it at all. But so now let's try swearing the iron vow to say, we, you know, we'll swear on an iron coin, coin, that we will get you to one of these places. And so now we swear. Okay, look at that. So that's, a, that's a nine. That's the best we could possibly roll. And then against a challenge dice of two and a one. So we didn't even need that extra momentum. That's a strong hit. That's great. That's great news. <laughs> okay, so when you swear an iron vow on a strong hit, you are emboldened and it is clear what you must do next. Ask the oracle if unsure. You take plus two momentum. And so we'll, we'll get there in a moment. Uh, but we take plus two momentum, which is great. So we already had plus five, now we're at plus seven, which is very useful. But now... We have sworn the iron vow to get him to a place of safety. We have to decide what that place is. Um, and so let's say 
um, between the two, he thinks that being strong and ambitious, he would be uh, better suited for Froststead, where the uh, bandit camp is. But we're going to ask the Oracle. So I think it's more likely that he would say that. We're going to do our ro roll 1D100. And if it's 26 or higher, he wants to go to Froststead. Otherwise, he wants to go to Elfbrook. 95. So he's, he wants to go to Froststead. Uh, in order, so I'm adding this to the adventure journal now. Um, all right. So, in the adventure journal, um, there was one person left in Grimhope, a miner named Matic, who was away from town and everything happened. Um, in exchange for telling us what he knows, he asked us to swear to escort him safely to Froststead. All right, so that's happening. So we have sworn that vow, and he and it's successful. So now he'll tell us what he knows. So because he was away from town, let's try to figure out, does he know anything about what happened? I think that anything that would take out the whole town, I, it feels like there might be warning signs about that, right? So let's say that it's likely that he had some inkling that maybe something was going to go down. <clears throat> maybe he didn't expect anything like this to happen, but he could give us some sort of a clue to work from. Okay, so 27, which is only just barely within our more likely range, but it means he did know a little bit of something. So one of the things that... We, we can always use the oracle tables, and one of the oracle tables is settlement trouble, right? And so we could roll on that to try to determine maybe what happened. But I had an idea that I thought might be nice to sort of tie it into some of the larger stuff going on for me, which is for, for Chenda, who wants to know more about the firstborn and what their deal is. And on our map here, we are on the ragged coast in this region right here, and but Grimland is closest to the border with the Deep Wilds, which is the elf territory. And so maybe whatever it is has to do with the elves. So um, let's, let's roll the... Um, I'm going to roll the oracle to, you know what? I'm just going to say, um, hmm, has to, has to do with it. So I'm going to declare that it has to do with the elves, but the next question is going to be the oracle of, do we think that everybody went willingly or were they taken against their will? Did they decide to go wherever they've gone? And uh, I'm going to say it seems unlikely that they would all just abandon their homes and just walk off into elven territory, right? For any reason, that seems unlikely. So I'm going to ask the oracle again, but it's most likely that they would have been taken against their will. All right, so 71 suggests, yes, they were taken against their will, but why, right? So the elves, we established in the world truths that they uh, are live in isolation, are fiercely protective of their own lands. But had they given warnings before? 
maybe that's what Maddox knows is that, hmm, yeah, so maybe what Maddox can tell us is that there had been contact with the elves on a prior occasion and the people of Grimland were told that this village was too close to the elven territory and would uh, represent, therefore, um, an incursion and that they were warned to leave. And maybe from Maddox's perspective, uh, it was something where, like, you know, his people said, no, we're not going to leave. You can, that, that's it. We're just not going to leave. But then, you know, he goes off to do some mining, comes back. Oh my gosh, everybody's gone. So that's pretty, uh, pretty dramatic. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that though. And what I'm actually going to do with that too, uh, he, so in the journal, Maddock told us that the people of Grimland had been warned that their circle was too close to elven lands and were told to leave, they refused. But Matic had not been aware that there was any additional um, contact until he returned from mining to find everyone gone. Okay, so we're going to want to explore that some more, but that's, that seems like it's unlikely at this point that, um, you know, so find out, figure out where the people of Grimland went is, is maybe that seems the most likely. But in order to call that <clears throat> something where uh, we can say we've achieved progress on this goal, <coughs> I think we need a little bit more than just a suspicion. So I am, however, going to call that making progress on um, my learn the ways of the firstborn because this is learning something about elves and the way they act and what they do. So because on my learn the ways of the firstborn, that's epic. Every time you make progress, you just add one tick out of four to a box. Uh, so that means I have one fourth of one box full out of uh, 10. Um, but we have also, I think, uh, we've got a clue to the, uh, where the people of Grimland went, but I think we need confirmation of that. And so let's maybe try looking around the village, uh, to see if we can find any additional clues, uh, as to, you know, c to confirm this suspicion. So gather information is a, uh, a move. When you search an area, ask questions, conduct an investigation, or follow a track, you roll plus wits. So I'm going to go ahead and roll plus wits right now. And so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so with a three, that's as low as I can roll. It's a action score of... Uh, you know, three against a two and a seven. So that's still a weak hit. And in a weak hit for gather information, the information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Envision what you discover and, and take plus one momentum. So I've got a pretty good momentum at this point. Now it's at a plus eight, but, uh, if it had been plus eight last time. So I think that what we find is going to be, uh, it, it's a complication, right? So when we're searching the village, 
we could ask the oracle what it is. And, you know, like maybe it's some additional danger introduces a new danger. So maybe, you know, one of the things that we established about this world is that there are beasts all over the place. And now we have a freshly abandoned village. Maybe a beast wanders in. Oh, no. Right. I think that's maybe what happens. So let's let's look at um, let's let's maybe say one, the likely option is a beast. And then a less likely option is horror, um, uh, is the new danger that is introduced as we search. So rolling a 1d100, it's a 94, so it's going to be a beast. Let's look real quick at what some of the beasts are in this game. So and then our foes and encounters section, um, beasts. You know, what I actually had fought before when um, we, uh, when I played this before, I had just declared, um, you know, that a beast, I was like fighting a giant boar and there was a giant wolf, but I turned out I was only using the animals section and there's a whole different one for beasts. But so the beasts that it has here, there's a basilisk, which is an extreme beast. That's pretty, uh, pretty rough. That would be uh, pretty difficult. Uh, an elder beast which would also be extreme. Harrow spider would be a dangerous one. Leviathan would be epic. and we're, That wouldn't make sense in this mining village anyway. Uh, mammoth would be another extreme one. And a wyvern would also be extreme. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, gosh. Extreme. You know what? I, you know... Let's, let's just go with a bat, uh, how, okay. Yeah, let's, um, yeah, let's, let's just make it a basilisk. Uh, that's kind of what I feel like I want to do, even though an extreme means per harm, it's only going to be two ticks. So that's, um, that's going to be pretty rough. So let's add basilisk. And it's extreme, which means that every time I do a point of harm to it, I only mark half of a box. And the goal here is I want to get the box filled as close to 10 as possible, because then I need to do a move called end the fight in order to finish it off. But it also might be that if it, it starts looking like we're not going to make it, um, we might just need to run you know, and abandon our search of the village for now. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's look at basilisks. Basilisks dwell in the flooded lands, lurking in the murky waters of the swamps or within marshy thickets. So this one's like far from home. Uh, there they wait patiently for prey. Um, and then uh, features, it's a giant snake, dull yellow-brown skin, vibrant yellow eyes, Lay in wait, mesmerizing gaze, sudden bite, crush. Wants to just eat. Okay. All right, I'm scared, you guys. <laughs> I'm scared about, I'm definitely scared of this thing. Um, okay, so uh, uh, let's, uh, the way we begin this is we need to enter the fray. Uh, when you enter into combat, you set the rank of each of your foes, which we've done. <clears throat> then you roll to determine who's in control. And so I'm facing off against my foe to start. So I'm going to roll plus heart. Rolling plus heart. And it looks like I got a, uh, a 7 against a 3 and a 10, which is a weak hit. So on a weak hit for Enter the Fray, I'm choosing 1. So I can either take plus 2 momentum or I can take initiative. And uh, one of the things that is important in this is to, to be able to do the de act decisively, you need to have initiative. And so that's, that's what we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna do. Plus we've already got a fair amount of momentum right now. Um, so we're gonna take initiative. And with that initiative, we're gonna strike. So, when you have initiative and attack in close quarters, roll plus iron. And when you have, uh, yeah, and so, and that's uh, what I'm going to do. So basically, um, as I am 
you know, we're searching the village, uh, Katya and, and Matic and I, uh, all of a sudden slithering out from the ruins of a crushed building, uh, a giant basilisk, and I draw my sword and I say, get back! Ha! Have at you! And I'm going to attempt to strike. So I'm rolling plus iron. Okay. So I rolled iron and got a four against a three and a ten. Those tens are killer, man. Um, okay. So a weak hit. On a weak hit with strike... I inflict my harm and lose initiative. So that means that uh, when I am uh, using a lethal weapon, you do two harm per, you know, successful attack. And so in this case, because it's an extreme enemy, we learned that it's two ticks in a box for one harm, which means that doing two harm is one completed box. Four ticks in one box is completed box. So that's one out of ten, but now I don't have initiative. So now <coughs> I think that it's probably going to, you know, now that I've struck it once, it's going to try to mesmerize the our, our little uh, community here, our little three people to see who that it, who it can do, uh, you know, what it can, um, uh, you know, what it can, you know, it can try to mesmerize us. Now, one of the things in this game is that, like, the enemies don't roll. It is only the, you know, the player characters that, that make rolls. And so in this context, I think if we imagine that its response is it's going to try to use its mesmerizing eyes, then I think it is, uh, um, it's a face danger to try to initially resist um, that, that sort of effect. Uh, and so let's go ahead and say we're facing danger. Um, and I think that in this case it makes the most sense. Like my best stat is heart. And so if I could justify, um, yeah, so I think... So wit with wits is what kind of makes the most sense in terms of what I was thinking, like, like to know to look away. So I think I'm going to roll that, even though if I could justify doing it with heart, I would have a, another plus one on it. But you know, I I don't I don't want to I want to I don't want to abuse the mechanics. Trust the fi follow the fiction first, right? So I want to say, oh no, basilisk, don't look at its eyes, and try to uh, get everyone to, you know, and shout out that. So. I'm going to roll face danger uh, with wits. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So I got an eight, which is the best I can get with wits. And the challenge dice were both sevens, which means that I got a strong hit. But when the challenge dice match, that's an additional rule When where it, there's... When it's a strong hit and they match, that's an opportunity, a new opportunity. Um, but uh, when you get a miss and they match, it's like a new complication. So let's think about what's our opportunity. We were trying to... Um, yeah, so we were trying to look away, like not look into its eyes. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this? How about this, you guys? Um, when I look away, I look over and I'm like shouting at the others like, you know, look, don't look in its eyes. But then what I see is that there is um, Maddox mining cart is full of what looks like salt. Like it's a salt mine. And the salt is like very fine and, uh, you know, and what I'm thinking is like if I could grab that salt and throw it in the basilisk's eyes and blind it, it would not only be an advantage for us, but it would like help protect us against its gaze. So I think that that's the opportunity is that I see that, that salt. 
uh, nearby. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to secure an advantage by blinding it with some of the salt. So this is probably also another, um, gosh, you know, like, I think this is a wits roll again, right? Um, now, you know what, I'm going to justify that it's not, you know, grabbing a handful of salt and throwing it, like, I'm not trying to do it from a long distance. It doesn't take intelligence to, you know, the opportunity is what gave me the uh, intelligence. Yeah, so I think I'm going to say it's heart, which is just willing to get up close to try to do it. So I'm going to roll um, plus heart to try to secure an advantage by blinding this thing with the salt. Okay, awesome. So we got an eight. Um, against a three and a three, which means not only is it another strong hit, but it's another opportunity. Okay, so on secure an advantage, when you get a strong hit, first you take control, which I'll have initiative again, which means I can make another move now and add plus one to it. Um, and then, uh, or I can take an additional plus two momentum, but I think I'm going to do that other one. So... <coughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to strike as well. Uh, and so that I'm going to roll plus iron and add plus one to it. And look, and that's a strong hit. So we got a six, which was the die was a three plus my two iron and then the additional plus one against a two and a three, which means that for a strong hit on strike, um, this is going well so far, by the way, <laughs> compared to the last time I fought anything. Um, so on a strong hit with strike, you in inflict an additional plus one harm and retain initiative. That's great. So first let's mark that. So I would be doing it plus two harm. So I would be doing two harm normally, but I do an additional one. So what that means is another full box and then a half a box. So that means that, you know, I've got, you know, that much progress done and I still have initiative, but we didn't really establish what that opportunity was. So maybe what that opportunity, um, let me, let's think, what could that opportunity be? Um, ah, let's see, because I, I think, I think Matic, Matic is strong, but, you know, he and Katya are not really fighters. I think mechanically, I don't want to just turn them into, like, adjunct PC characters. Um, but, so let's see, what, what could our uh, other opportunity be once we toss that salt into its eyes. Maybe it's just extra effective, like, um, hmm, mm, I don't know. Um, let's, let's, let's look at some of the Oracle tool things and see what, um, see maybe what, if it can give us some ideas about, um, you know, what, what sort of additional opportunity there is. Um, hmm, looking at the more oracles. Green. So, major plot twist. <laughs> um, no, combat action. Um, yeah, okay, let's, yeah, let's take that opportunity and roll a combat action. So, oops, okay, 23 on combat action is reveal a surprising truth. Reveal a surprising truth. How, what if we reveal, hmm, Oh, okay. 
What if we reveal that the basilisk has elven runes painted on it? That way, now we've found some clues that it was elves involved in all of this and that they can apparently control basilisks and yeah so that doesn't help us with the combat exactly but that's that seems very cool that seems very cool so let me just so we don't forget that let me add that to uh the journal uh okay so um all right we began to search the village for additional clues clues but before we got far a basilisk basilisk attacked I temporarily blinded it with salt from Maddox's cart. As it reared back away, we saw elven writing painted on its belly yeah that's very cool okay so we last left with a strong hit which means to still have initiative which i think we're just going to press that attack right we're going to just keep going after it we we hit it with the salt got it with the sword a couple of times and we've got it currently you know like on the snake equivalent of its uh, heels so let's go ahead and roll another plus iron. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So this is, we got a six against a two and a seven, but here's where it lets us know we have eight momentum. And so we could momentum burn to make it a strong hit here, which I definitely think I'm gonna do. And so let's, when, what happens with momentum then is that because the, my momentum is higher than that challenge dice of seven, I can cancel them and make it a strong hit. And so my momentum goes back to my reset value of plus two, but I make it a strong hit. So a strong hit would already be my normal two harm plus one harm because that's what you get for a strong hit with strike, but because I am a sword master, when you strike or clash and burn momentum to improve your result, inflict an additional plus two harm. So that means we're going to do five harm with this blow. This is an especially skilled blow. So doing five harm is going to be another two and a half boxes. So we're going to fill up the third box here and then fill up two more boxes. So we've already got the progress track going up to halfway, which it, we're doing great, by the way, right now. And it hasn't, we haven't really even, like, it hasn't even managed to do anything to us. This is, uh, this is like, so far, it's like the polar opposite of my last <laughs> combat with this character. Um, so that's going great. And not only that, but we have a strong hit, so we still have initiative. So let's just ha 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 keep pressing that attack. So that's another strike. But now I don't have that plus eight momentum to rely on. So uh this is my luck can't can't uh last forever here. So uh that's gonna be okay. Wow, uh, the, another eight against seven and one, so that's another strong hit. Yeah, that's, um, that is going great. So, um, gonna be, that's another three harm to it. It's gonna be another full box and another half a box. And so 
Now we're at six and a half, which means that if we want to try to try to end the fight, we could do that now because we just got a strong hit. We had initiative. And so we could roll this. And what that would mean is that we would roll the progress track and it, instead of rolling the action die, it would just go, but based on the number of completed boxes, which would be six. And so, uh, that could be successful potentially. Um, if we got a strong hit, it would be just, it would be over. Yeah, we would do great. But if it was a weak hit, we would, um, end the fight, but we would take some sort of a cost. But then, um, but if it's a miss, we lose the fight. Um, as opposed to like, so end the fight means it's going to be over one way or the other. Right. And I don't think we want to risk losing the fight to this thing if we can help it at all. Right. So, um, in this, uh, yeah. So I think that's, let's, let's definitely try to, uh, get it a little bit more, uh, before we take it, but we've still got initiative. So I think I'm going to, uh, take the advantage that I've had a couple uh, and try to build, um, a little more, uh, momentum to keep that, uh, built up. So that, well, you know what? I still have the initiative, so I think it makes sense to just keep on hacking away at it. I've just been having some really good dice rolls. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, so that's another eight, but against an eight and an eight. So that's a complication. So that means it's a miss and a complication. So let's look at what happens with a miss on uh, strike. With a miss, your attack fails and you must pay the price and your foe has initiative. So yeah, this is where, you know, it, uh, you know, has uh, become a problem. So for pay the price and complication, so what we could say is make the most obvious negative outcome happen. Well, I mean, the most obvious negative outcome would be that it, you know, it hurts me back, right? Like it, it regains initiative and it hurts me. And it's an epic or not an epic, but an extreme creature. So it's going to hit hard, right? Ooh, boy. Yeah. You know what? I, I kind of want to. Well, and then we get a, so I think, hmm, but we got a complication too. So let's roll on the complicate on the, on the combat action thing and see if that gives us some additional thoughts about how to interpret this pay the price. 52 on the combat action table is going to be readying an action. Mm, I mean, that doesn't really, oh, uh, well, so what we can just say maybe is that it was ready for that. That doesn't really add a complication though. Like if we were already going to say I'm paying the price for its attack. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Let's, let's roll that one again, just because I, I feel like that one doesn't feel like it applies. 86. 86 would be attack with precision. I feel like this table is maybe not ideal for what we were kind of trying to deal with here. Um, you know what? How about this? Um, we're just going to say, what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to take the harm, but the complication will be, um, the complication will be that Matic is becoming concerned that we won't actually be able to help him after all. And we'll have to do, um, uh, we'll have to do a new, another compel role for him, um, after, after this. No, I, I don't like that. Never mind. Um, you know what? Um, let's just do the pay the price roll and we'll just, um, we'll, 
Yeah, I want to honor the complication. I'm going to I'm going to do that the pay the price. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> um I'm going to make the most obvious negative outcome happen, which is that it hurts me, which is going to already be bad cuz how dangerous this thing is. Um but then we're going to also do the a roll on this pay the price table that will be on top of that. So first, let's look at how the um how much damage it does at as, as an extreme. It inflicts four harm. Yikes. Okay, so that's super bad. Super bad. Okay, because I'm at plus four health. Now, going at zero doesn't take you out of the fight necessarily, but losing four health does put me down uh, at zero. And look, they've, they fixed the thing too. The, the character sheet used to automatically tick wounded, um, when you mo moved it to zero, but technically, um, you have to also get a miss on the endure harm, um, to, uh, you know, to that's, you know, so that's the way the rules work. So I had to take my health all the way down to zero, and now I'm going to have to endure harm. When you face physical damage, you suffer minus health equal to your foe's rank, which I've just done. If your health is zero, um, you know, so my health was not zero yet. So even though it is now, so now I would roll plus health or plus iron, whichever is higher. Now, because my health is now zero, iron is higher. So I'm rolling that. Oof. Okay. So that's a six against a seven and a one. So that is a weak hit on endure harm, which means uh, on a weak hit, you press on. So like it has just done a devastating blow and it has initiative now, which means I can't just do my strike again. Um, that was really, that was pretty bad. And that was just on top of, um, you know, now we have to figure out what the complication was. So let's roll another D100 to, for the pay the price table. Three. Okay. Uh, the pay the price table for a three is a person or community you trusted loses faith in you or acts against you. I, I, a person or, yeah, okay, you know, let's, that, that just t ties it back to what I was saying earlier is that, you know, Maddox is starting to doubt that I'm capable of protecting him. Um, and I'm going to have to compel him to stay with us or else I'll have to forsake my vow. Uh, which I don't want to do. So uh, when, once the fight is done, I'll have to recompel him to try to still stay with us and help us or, and, you know, and follow through with the original thing. Okay. Okay. But so now it's just done a nasty hit against me. I, I would have a real hard time taking another uh, hit like that. <clears throat> um, I have to try to get a better position, I think try to secure an advantage. So despite being extremely scared by that really tough thing, I'm going to try to secure an advantage to try to rally myself, bolster and try to act like it didn't just you know, <laughs> take me to the ground. So I'm, I am uh, summoning my courage, my bravery. I'm going to roll to create an advantage with plus heart. need to okay look at that and I got a nine it's the highest and against an eight and a four so that's a strong hit hooray 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 okay so what does that mean for securing advantage with a strong hit I get to choose take control make another move now and add plus one or take plus two momentum um And so I'm going to take plus two momentum because I, because I got a strong hit, I get initiative anyway. Um, but I won't be adding a plus one to it. I'm taking the momentum instead. Uh, partly just because with my health at zero, if I take another hit like that, I'm going to lose all of that momentum, which is going to be super bad. All right, so I need to bolster that up a little bit in case I end up having to take harm from this thing again. Uh, okay, so 
I now have control though. So I'm going to uh, strike, strike with iron. Oh, okay, great. Um, so that's an eight against a three and a five. So let's go ahead and look at that progress. So that's going to be another two harm. So that's going to be one more fill. Oh, wait, no, it's a strong hit. So it's another three harm, right? Because it was a strong hit on strike. So another three is going to be filling that half box and now another full box. So now I've got eight out of 10, which is pretty good. And since I just got a strong hit, I just want to try to, I'm going to try to end the fight. <sighs> so this is not a sure thing, but uh, yeah, let's, let's, um, let's try it though. So when, when we're going to end the fight, um, we're rolling on this progress track. And, uh, oops. Um, okay, and look, we got a strong hit. We got an eight against, you know, the eight was the progress against a six and a seven, which means shing, I stabbed the, the uh, sword up through the bottom of the thing's jaw and into its brain. <laughs> and its mouth like sags open with the sword going up through it and it rolls over flopping around thrashing around and it's uh and it's death throes and um and <laughs> and chenda i think collapses to her uh her knees and she's like oh that was really scary <laughs> Wow. Wow. We did it. You guys, holy cow. That was, that went, you know, for being a much tougher fight in theory that went a lot better. Um, and it really helped having that extra, um, momentum going in. So yeah, it was extreme. Exactly. Uh, okay. So, um, I think, um, at that point, uh, Chenda is going to try to summon, up her uh, uh, her nerves again and uh, not overreact to that and need to go back over to uh, to uh, Matic and try to compel him again to try to resume what we're going to do. And I think, you know, maybe you know, I'm just going to try to leverage. I see what I just did. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that um, we're going to try, yeah, I'm going to roll heart to try to, um, you know, re-solidify our original plan. Okay, good. Like, I'm getting a lot of good rolls this time. Um, that's great. Uh, so we got a nine against a three and a four, so no problem, no problem. Okay, so what that means is that we have confirmed with him that we're good and um, we're going to stick with the original plan. He'll do what uh, you want or share what they know and take plus one momentum. To go ahead and put that back up to plus five. Okay. Whew. All right. And um, if you use this exchange to gather information, um, make that move now and add plus one. So I'm going to do that again um, to say, all right, now let's continue searching the village and look at these painted markings on the basilisk to try to determine what else we can about, about that. So I'm going to do this, um, this wits roll with a plus one. Okay. So we rolled low that time. So it's only a weak hit which is what we did last time where we ended up with, uh, um, you know, we, we ended up with, a a, a basilisk. <laughs> um, well, shoot. Um, so let's say, so, so gather information on a weak hit. The information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Hmm. 
Um, hmm. So on a weak hit, I do take another plus one momentum, which I'm going to do. Um, but so what complication could we get now, given that we had just, we, we spotted Elvin riding on the basilisk, but maybe we just don't necessarily know what it means. Like we don't understand the writing. It just looks elvish and maybe, um, Maybe just the complication is just that there are no, we can't find any other clues as to what happened. So in order to try to find out more the information we need, we're just going to need to move on there because there's no clues left behind. The elves has left no trace other than this basilisk that was left behind, perhaps to attempting to finish off anyone left behind, uh, which fortunately we were able to, uh, deal with. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's going to be the unfortunate complication there for our gather information. So let's go ahead and just update our quest journal, our adventure journal here. So um, even after a devastating hit from the creature that I thought might have killed me, I managed to stick my sword through its brain and end the fight. Maddock had begun to doubt he would be safe with us, but the sight of the defeated creature changed his mind. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we were not able to find any additional clues as to the whereabouts of the residents of Grimland. All right. So at this point, I need to do some healing. Um, it would be maybe great if we could forge a bond with uh, Matic. Um, we need to resupply. And given that this is a village where people were taken suddenly, probably there are a lot of supplies around, I would think, right? So let's look at what makes the most sense here. So resupply, uh, when you hunt, forage, or scavenge, roll plus wits. So let's, let's start with that. Um, yeah, let's start with that roll. Um, we're going to roll plus wits. Okay. And so that's, we got a seven against a six and an eight, which is a weak hit, which means that we can take, according to the moves here, for resupply on a weak hit, you can take up to plus two supply, but you suffer minus one momentum for each. Well, thankfully here we do have a bunch of momentum at the moment. So let's go ahead and take momentum back down to plus four and take plus two supply, bringing us to plus three which is pretty good. So now let's, um, let's, let's try to forge, um, a bond with, um, uh, Matic just to say, you know, like now that we've convinced you that we can protect you and that we trust you and we're all good together, let's, let's try to like actually form, form a bond with him you know, it's like, it was your salt that saved the day and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to roll plus heart, try to forge those, this bond. All right. And we got an eight against a four and a seven, which is a strong hit. So for forge a bond on a strong hit, make note of the bond, mark a tick on your bond progress track, and then choose one, either plus one spirit or plus two momentum. Well, my spirit was at plus three, so it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and make that plus four. I'm going to add 
a bond to my bond tracker and then I have a note here where I list my um, my bonds so I'm gonna add Matic there um, Matic the strong ambitious Ah, if I could type. Uh, Miner from Grimland was the last one left. We killed a basilisk for him. All right. Okay, cool. And what that, what's great about that too is that now that we have a bond with him and uh, we're going to do a move called Sojourn, which is when you spend time in a community seeking assistance. So I think now that we've gotten some basic supplies, before we move on and take Matic to Froststead, um, we're going to just basically find one of the non-wrecked buildings here and try to just hang out, rest up, maybe get a little of my health back <laughs> and... Um, and uh, also, I think I'm going to, yeah, we're going to do that first, and then I might uh, do another heal later. We'll see how that goes. But so, when you spend time in a community seeking assistance, you roll plus heart. And if you share a bond, add plus one. But then, also, because my character is bonded, when you make a move which gives you an add for sharing a bond, add plus one more. So we're going to roll plus heart and add two. Great. Look at that. We got um, one of the challenge dice was going to be a not was a nine, but with uh, we rolled a six plus my normal three for heart plus another two means we got 11, which means that's a strong hit, even though, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. Actually, I feel, I want to double check the rules reference because I feel like I remember, even though the dice just let me get to an 11, I feel like I read somewhere that it can't actually be, uh, can't actually be above a 10. I'm just curious now. So the mechanics... Let's see, where's the rolls? Roll, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Your action score is never greater than 10. Anything over than that is ignored. Okay, so that's what I thought, which means it's still a strong hit, but the goal there is the idea that um, there should, no matter how high your score might be, there, it's never a 100% chance of success. A, a 10 would still, um, beat it. A 10 on the challenge dice, that is. But it was only a 9, so that means our score of 10 um, means that uh, that's a strong hit on the Sojourn, which is great news for us. So this, this whole session is just going so much better than the last one. Um, so, on a strong hit, you and your allies choose two from within the categories below. And so, um, yeah, so if, and then it's, if you share a bond, choose one more. So, hmm, I'm trying to interpret the language here. So it says, on a strong hit, you and your allies may each choose two from within the categories below. On a weak hit, choose one. If you share a bond, choose one more. So there's three sentences there. But the share a bond, choose one more, is after saying about a weak hit. So, like, is it meant to give you a plus one more, whether it's a strong or weak? I think it must, because otherwise it makes there be no difference between a strong hit or a weak hit, right? It's got to be. Yeah, that's got to be it. So we get to pick three of these things. Um, let's see. Um, interesting. Um, so, and instead of choosing just, instead of choosing three, I can also, um, if I share, um, I can roll heart again, focusing on one of them. 
and and get another plus two for one. So like if I just wanted health, then I can try rolling the heart again. Um, ooh, yeah, and so I could roll heart plus one because I share a bond. And if it's a strong hit, then I would get an additional plus two of whatever I'm taking. On a weak hit, just one. On a miss, I could lose all benefit. I don't want to risk that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't need to clear a condition because I don't have any right now, although it was really close. I might have all, was very close to having to take wounded. But I'm going to choose recuperate, which is take plus two health for yourself and any companions. So let me go ahead and take my zero health and make it a two instead. Whew. Um, and then I can also do consort, which is take plus two spirit, which I, I maybe don't need. I'm already at plus four. I can take provision and take another plus two supply or plan and take an additional plus two momentum. Hmm. My supply is at plus three, which is not bad right now. And I feel like I could, yeah. I think I'm going to go ahead and take that momentum and go ahead and bring that up to a plus six. Um, oh, and then I get a, I get a third one too. Um, and so like the, the last of these categories is I could uh, take on a quest, but I'm kind of already doing that. So I think I'm actually going to take the provision as, as well. Um, I can't. So, yeah. So I, my health is still relatively low at plus two, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a heal uh, with my herbalist uh, mode uh, in the morning. So I think in the morning, you know, we've we've spent uh, the the evening with Matic, getting to know him a little better, um, and uh, in the morning we have uh, recovered a lot more supply and. Uh, you know, we've, we, we're, we're all feeling a little better. We've made some plans about the next day, the journey that we're going to make to back to Froststead. And uh, then I'm going to attempt my heal move um, to give myself a little bit more, uh, a little bit more help before we move on. So for heal, when you treat an injury or ailment, you roll plus wits. If you're mending your own wounds, you can roll plus wits or which or plus iron, whichever is lower. But because I'm an herbalist, when you attempt to heal using herbal remedies and you have at least plus one supply, you may choose one, either add plus two to the roll or on a hit take or give an additional plus one health. And so I think what I'm going to choose is on a hit take or give an additional plus one health. So I'm going to do my my heal roll, which is wits. Um, uh, well, so it does say if you're mending your own wounds, wits or iron, whichever is lower, but for me, they're the same. So I'm rolling wits. Okay, so that's a seven against a two or a nine, which is a weak hit. So let's look at the weak hit um, roll. On a weak hit, as above, but you must suffer minus one supply or minus one momentum. So I don't have the wounded condition. I don't need to. So I can take up to plus two health. And because of my herbalism, I can take three. But I do have to suffer minus one supply or minus one momentum. Good. That's not so bad. I think I'll take the momentum down to plus five from plus six and get myself back up to full health. Great. All right. Things are turning around for Chenda. All right. <laughs> Except for the whole part where, you know, like the entire quest was to find this village and it turns out everybody's gone. So, you know, everything's coming up Chenda. So let's update the journal here real quick. Okay. Whoops. Doop, doop, doop. All right. So. All right. Um. We stayed the night in the ruins of Grimland, but thankfully the 
people's rapid departure left behind plenty of supplies <clears throat> So we were able to equip ourselves well and make plans to travel back to Froststead with Matic. Um, so here's, here's the trick. Um, uh, I, I made use of my herbal remedies to treat the wounds left from the basilisk. So here's the trick though. This quest that we, this vow that we set to escort, um, Fro Matic to Frostead. Um, we need to be able to make progress on it. You know what? I think I'm going to say for a simple one like this, we're going to make progress on it with the same way that we do with the journeys. So when we make this vow, if we look at the sheet, right, we have this progress track for the vow, but if, since the vow was just to get him there, we're going to have a troublesome progress tracker to make the journey. So I think what we'll just say is the progress tracker um, on 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 for the quest. Every time we make a waypoint on the journey to uh, Frostead, we'll mark progress on the vow. I think that makes sense given what the vow was but maybe with the additional complication just that, um, you know, if when we arrive at Frosted something crazy is going on, that would obviously affect the vow as well. All right, so let's, let's create a uh, escort mission to Froststead. Also, it's worth noting that we left Froststead a little bit awkwardly because one of the people we met there, um, turns out he was a bandit who was planning to rob the people of Grimland and then said like, wait, you're not going to tell him, are you? And we didn't promise not to. And so it was a little awkward leaving. But now we're going to go back and say, well, it turns out. <laughs> oh, but of course... Gosh, if we tell the bandit camp that all the people of Frost of Grimland are gone, like they're just going to go and loot. Every they're going to just move in, probably. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe we could find out from them if they know anything else about it. It's not up to us to protect, to, to save the entire world. We can't, you know, like, um, you, you know, it's, I, I don't think it makes more sense to not tell them. They'll find out one way or another. Okay, so let's go ahead and prepare to undertake a journey. So we're going to undertake a journey. And when we are settling, setting out from a community with which you have a bond, which we do now because we forged a bond with Matic, and we're going to add plus one to the initial roll. And because of my bonded asset, we're going to add plus two. So we're setting, we're rolling plus wits, and we're going to um, add plus two. So let's go ahead and roll and see if our, uh, our journey. And this is back to the place we've been before. We're going from Grimland to back to Frosted on the map there. So wits plus two. Oh no. So we only got a, even with the extra plus two, we rolled a one. So it was a five against an eight and a seven, which makes it a miss. That's bad right off the bat, man. Okay. So 
on a miss, you are waylaid by a perilous event. Pay the price. Okay. All right. So let's look at pay the price and think about what is our perilous event. Um, let's just roll on the uh, d20 or the d on the oracle table there for for that. Um, Uh, all right, there we go. Okay, on the pay the price table, we got a 27. Something of value is lost or destroyed. I kept rolling that one the other day. Um, something of value is lost or destroyed. I don't know. Um, I don't know. What, like, what could that be? Um... I don't have that much stuff. Like, I've already dealt with that a couple of times. You know what? I'm going to roll again just because I've dealt with that one a couple of times in this game already. Um, trying to just avoid it continuing to be the same stuff happening. Okay, so 60. Definitely going to use this one no matter what. So, it is harmful. Okay, so... Um, that is just going to be a, uh, you know, we're going to take a, a point of harm and do the endure harm move. Um, so let's say um, at some point, um, you know, I, I, I take a tumble down a, a hillside and twist my knee uh, on, the, uh, on the way down. And uh, so I take one point of harm there. And I'm going to do the Endure Harm roll. So I'm going to roll either Health or Iron, whichever is higher. Currently my Health is 4. So I'm rolling that. And... Okay, and so that's nice strong hit there with a 10 against a 9 and a 1. So a strong hit on Endure Harm doesn't... So it's like you shake it off. If your Health is greater than 0, you can either... Uh, suffer minus one momentum in exchange for the health, or I can embrace the pain and take plus one momentum, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll let my health stay at plus four, but I'm going to take on a plus six momentum there. But we didn't make, uh, you know, we were delayed. We didn't make any progress on our, our journey. So now we're going to undertake a journey again, but we're not setting off from a community which with which we share a bond this time, so we don't have, um, you know, that extra plus two. So I think we're going to just go ahead and we're, we're going to roll the wits again. See, this is where we got into a vicious cycle the last time, and it just kept going badly. All right, so, okay, there we go. That's a little better. So we got a strong hit which um, was a 6 against a 1 and a 2, which means that we reach a waypoint, and this is a troublesome journey, so on the progress tracker, we get to mark three boxes. Yeah, so the undertake a journey on a strong hit, you reach a waypoint. If the waypoint is unknown to you, envision it, um, and then choose one, either you make good use of your resources, or you can take momentum at the cost of supply, which I don't think I'm going to do that right now. Um, so let's see. Um, I don't, yeah, so I think, yeah, I'm just, we could choose to do that, but I don't think I will. And so because we made progress on the Hmm. See, now I'm reconsidering whether, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to second guess myself. So progress, making progress on the, um, on the journey means making progress on the vow because we've got them there safe, right? Okay. So, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, keep going. going to try to make that next set of progress here. It's another wits roll. Okay. So we got a 4 against a 10 and a 4, which would be a miss. But we can burn our momentum to make it a weak hit instead. 
So let's look at what the difference would be. A miss would obviously be another pay the price um, we don't, and we don't make progress. Or on a weak hit, you reach a waypoint and mark progress, but suffer minus one supply. I think I'm willing to burn the momentum for that because we want to just go ahead and finish this, this journey. So we're still going to mark progress on the vow and the journey. Marking that. Okay, um, but minus one supply. And I think that maybe that one, um, you know, is, uh, you know, a little bit of a, um, you know, we're going to, I think, um, you know, we, that, was, that, day, that travel was a little bit rougher. So let's go ahead and try making camp here in the wild. Um, and so when you rest and recover for several hours in the wild, roll plus supply. And so that's uh, plus four currently. And so on a strong hit, you can, um, you know, gain some benefits. Um, and then I'm also going to maybe try to secure an advantage before we head on through. Um, okay, so rolling plus supply. Okay, look, we got to a 10 against a 1 and an 8, so that's a strong hit. We successfully make camp. So what does that mean? Strong hit when you make camp. Uh, choose, you and your allies choose two of the following. So I can take plus one health, minus one supply, and plus one health. Uh, so I could choose another plus one health uh, to, for any companions, plus one spirit, plus one momentum, or prepare when you break camp, add a plus one when you undertake a journey. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think... Let's do that. So we'll do the prepare and let's look at my, and we just burned some momentum. So we could probably use that again. I needed to reset it down to the plus two. My reset is two. Um, so when we burn momentum, we set it to two, but so let's, my health is plus four spirit four, supply four. So I could uh, bump any one of those up. I could also drop supply down to three to get health and something else. Yeah, how about this? Um, so I'm taking two things. So if I want to do prepare, I'm, do I'm going to do that one. And then also I'm going to... Yeah, recuperate and get my, um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to get my spirit, um, spirit up. Yeah. So, um, now I think also, um, I think we're going to sit there and before we make the journey, we're going to talk through, like, we're almost back to Froststead, right? We made this journey on the opposite direction. We're going to talk through uh, what Katya remembers about this territory and try to secure an advantage of just like the, you know, which, what's the best way to go from here. Um, and so we're going to do secure an advantage with wits. Eek, that's a miss. Okay. So we got a five against a seven and a five. We can't burn momentum for that. So a miss on secure an advantage is you fail or your assumptions betray you, pay the price. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. So what does that mean? So all we were trying to do is talk through... Talk through... Maybe... Maybe something's changed since we came through. When was the fire? Um, yeah, let's see. Um, so one of the things that happened in the last session is that there was a fire. Um, that, yeah, and, and it was, uh, in between, um, Frosted and, um, and, and, uh, Grimland. So maybe the lingering remnants of the fire make it so that we are not able to um, uh, gain any benefit from knowing what it looked like before. 
and worse it's i think that that maybe is stressful for all of us is just realizing like that that fire was really devastating and um uh, and just seeing the you know how much of the this land just seems ruined so i think we're going to take a point of spirit harm which we just got back and i'm going to do the endure stress move um so when you face mental shock suffer minus spirit equal to the foes rank which we just did and then um, we're going to roll spirit or heart spirit is still going to be highest so i'm rolling that oh no and so we got a miss on the test your spirit so let's see what happens i don't think that i've had this happen actually at all so on a miss, when you endure stress, you also suffer minus one momentum. And so we're not at zero spirit, so we don't have to mark shaken or corrupted. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it's not any more complicated than that yet, unless we were already at zero. But um, yeah, so we also lose a point of momentum. So now we're actually below our reset even. So much for... That was supposed to be a secure advantage to try to get us some more. Um, so we still have our plus one from making camp, but we're going to try to undertake a journey. Let me add this to the journal. So, you know, uh, um, aside from a brief stumble, we were making good progress back to Froststead, but the sight of the forest fire scar sobered all of us to see nature's wrath and understand how powerless we are in the face of such devastation took the wind out of our sails a bit. All right. So let's try making a little more progress, shall we? So we're rolling plus wits. We're adding a one because of our, our camp. Okay, got an eight against a three and a seven, so that's a strong hit. Good. So, <clears throat> undertake a journey on a strong hit. You reach another waypoint, and I think that um, we're we're going to be so we're marking progress. So that's going to be nine, and then nine here. And so what we're going to do first is roll to arrive to reach your destination, which is the progress move. We roll with this tracker and it's going to be a nine. So that's pretty good. Um, means we have a pretty good chance of at least a week hit. Um, and then based on the result of that, we will maybe try to fulfill our vow to, um, to Matic. And then I'll have finally completed a vow. I'll get some experience. Okay, so strong hit on arriving to Froststead. We arrive, so when we reach our destination, um, the situation at the destination favors you. Choose one. We can either make another move now, not a progress move, and add plus one to it, or take plus one momentum. I think I'll take the, the momentum to so get us back to that two. Um, okay, so the situation favors us, which maybe just means, um, you know, nobody seems to know anything about, you know, maybe, um, maybe we have talked with Matic about what, what, if anything, he should say about it but we want to gather information right so i think that the move that we're going to make now is we're going to try to gather information with that plus one and try to see if anyone there knows anything about what might have happened 
to the people of Grimland. So um, we're going to be rolling plus wits. Um, we don't currently have any bonds in Frosted, despite our attempt. Uh, actually, hmm, we just brought Matic here. No, I don't think that would count yet. He we just arrived with him, so he. Um, we're going to try to roll plus wits to see if we can uh, with a plus one to try and uh, find out if anyone knows anything. Okay, we got a 9 against a 3 and a 9, which is a weak hit. So a weak hit on gather information. The information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Envision what you discover or ask the oracle if not sure. Um, I get a plus 1 momentum. So let's ask the oracle what is... Um, maybe, there, maybe there's a new trouble. You know, like... Um, Oh, yeah. What if... Hmm. What if the new trouble is they have a good idea of what might happen because they have recently also received a similar warning from the elves, just like Grimland did. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's, uh-oh. So now we're in trouble, right? Because it means that Froststead might be next. Ooh, okay, okay. So that's definitely cool. But um, so now, though, we're going to try to go ahead and fulfill our vow to uh, Matic to say, here, we brought you to a circle that's what we promised to do, um, but we're going to have to talk about what happens next. But we fulfilled that vow, so I think we're going to try to complete it. Um, all right, so let's try completing that vow. Okay, um, we got a 9 against a 1 and a 9, which is a weak hit. So let's see, fulfill a vow, which... Um, um, yeah, so when we fulfill a vow on a weak hit, there's more to be done, or you realize the truth of your quest, envision what you discover, then mark experience. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so we don't get any experience because it was only a troublesome. So on a weak hit, it's not really, really done yet. Um, so we don't get any experience for it. But we can complete that vow and swear a new vow. Um, and get a plus one on that roll. So, because it's a weak hit, even with a nine. Okay. All right. So, and, it, and and we know exactly what the complication is, right? Because obviously, we've brought him to a new place where, the, but the whole point was that it was supposed to be safe. But now, what we're discovering is that the buzz of Froststead is. They've received a visit from the elves warning them that they have to leave. All right. Um, gosh. Okay. Um, so let me think. What, what, what's the next step? So I've got to, I can certainly warn them that deciding to stay against the warning sure didn't work well last time. Um, so, eh, I think maybe this is a new vow. Oh. You know, one of the, my first thought was like, well, what if you know, Elfbrook was always the other choice. What if I tell everybody here in Frosted, Elfbrook is farther away from the borders. It's probably not um, going to be, you know, at risk from the elves. But the thing about Elfbrook, you know, is the name aside is that 
that was really a, this little ramshackle town put together by a bunch of young people um, leading these like bandits into town is probably not going to be great for the people there already. These bandits are just going to run roughshod all over them. Honestly, though, you know what? Maybe they need that. Anyway, I can't just leave these people, especially Maddox. You know, we formed a bond with Maddox now. He's a good guy. Can't leave him there. So I promise. So the vow will be to escort Maddox and anyone else from Frosted who will come to Elfbrook. Yeah. So in that one, I think we're going to have the journey be. Yeah. Okay. So we've completed this one, but now the new coin. The, so the new vow is escort Matic and, and the people Froststead to Elfbrook. Um, let's see. Incorporate the people. Incorporate the people of Froststead into Elfbrook. So the idea there is we're going to first have to persuade Frost people of Froststead to leave. And we have to get them there. And, um, and then we have to persuade the people of Elfbrook to, to not, um, to agree to that, I guess. And then, um, help them establish a new circle. Yeah. Okay, I think, yeah, so that's going to be a new vow. So, um, all right, let's update the journal. So, when we finally arrived in Froststead, the talk of the town was that now they had received a similar warning from the elves. Given that this place would no longer be safe, it didn't feel right to leave Matic there. I decided to swear a new vow to persuade to persuade uh, to incorporate the people of Froststead to into the town of Elf, the circle of Elfbrook. All right, this is going to be a troublesome vow because it's more complicated and it's going to be persuade the people of so the, the check marks here of progress persuade the people of Froststead to leave travel with them to Elfbrook and then um so a troublesome one, I need to get it to like an eight at progress out of 10. We need to make progress four times. So um, let's see, um, persuade the people of Elfbrook to accept them. And then um, help the new circle um, establish 
a community. Establish a community. I don't know what that means. We'll figure it out when we get there. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about what Frosted is like. Um, we established that the last time. So it was located on a moor. Um, people are wild, weary, and friendly. We previously met Talos the Bandit, who is stealthy and sociable. And I think that we're going to first try to, um, I think we're going to try to sojourn here for, uh, before we do anything else. Um, now that we've arrived. So we, I think now that we have, let's see, if you share a bond in that community, I mean, we don't really, um, you know what? We're going to find Talus, the bandit. And even though we left things on ugly terms or awkward terms, at least we're going to warn, let him know that basically it's a good thing. He didn't decide to do it because now it turns out that, uh, we have advance warning that the elves really mean business. So I'm going to, um, try to go talk to him and try to persuade Talus. It's like, come on, you and I, you know, we talked through this, you know, we, we kind of had a connection the last time we were here. We're going to need to do some hard work together here. Can we try to reconnect on this? And uh, I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to fulfill, uh, or I'm going to try to roll that heart. I'm getting lots of notifications on my phone here. Um, all right. So, um, so let's roll heart to try to, um, to forge a bond with Talus. Didn't go well last time. Oh, look, we got a nine against a three and an eight. So that's a strong hit. That is good news. So let's go ahead and mark a new bond, add that to my, um, list of bonds. Um, Talus the bandit from Froststead. Okay. So now we're going to sojourn in this place. Now we have a bond with someone here. So we're going to roll plus heart with that plus two because I have the bonded. So heart plus two. Heart plus two. Okay. Um, and uh, that is a weak hit. Not the best. But... Um, Here's where um, I'm going to have to swear that new vow because the last one was complicated, right? So I didn't actually do the swear new swear and iron vow um, thing. Um, yeah. Um, I need to do a new swear and iron vow roll. Actually, technically, I should have done that already. Um, yeah, let me let me do that now. Um, having talked just with Matic about it before doing the rest of this, so now we're swearing a new iron vow plus one, and we're doing it to a person we already have a bond with, which is, would mean we add two. So we're going to be adding three to our heart roll, which is pretty good. So this is for the new vow, and this is dangerous. So heart plus three. Okay, so we got an 11, but again, that should only be 10, but it's against a seven and a four, which makes it a strong hit. So uh, for the swear and iron vow on a strong hit, you're emboldened. Um, you take plus two momentum. All right, good deal. So now, now we're doing the sojourn. We did the sojourn, and that was a weak hit. Um, the sojourn on a weak hit, you're, we're choosing one, but if we share a bond, we choose one more. So we are choosing two of these things. 
um, provide aid. We've kind of already, we're kind of sort of doing that already, but um, that would just let us swear a different iron vow, which I don't think we need to do. So I think we're choosing two of these things. Let's look at our tracker. So our supplies at four, spirit four, health four. Okay. We're going to need some serious momentum, though, to do some of these things that we need to do. So I think of the two things we're going to choose, I'm going to, I'm going to take two momentum, giving us up to plus seven. And then, um, you know, we, we can't, uh, it's, it's take plus two health spirit or supply. You know, I'm going to go ahead and put that up to five, uh, the supply up to five, which means that we're kind of sacrificing one of those, but it, uh, it's still pretty good, but we got that momentum going. So now I think we want to try to really do everything we can to persuade the people that they're going to need to leave. So first, I think we're going to secure an advantage with heart by talking to Talus and saying, okay, Talus, we've got a bond, right? We know what we need to do here. Let, what do we need to say to everybody? How do we need to explain to them that they need to leave? So this is a plus heart, uh, secure an advantage roll. Okay, we got an eight against a five and a three. That's a strong hit. So a strong hit with secure an advantage is um, uh, we can make another move now and add plus one, or we can take another two momentum. If we take another two momentum, we get up to nine, which I'm going to go ahead and say that's better than right now than just a plus one on this next roll. Uh, and so now we're going to compel, uh, try to compel the people of Froststead. The elves mean business and they just wiped out a whole town or took them or did something. Um, you get, you can't stand against them, not by yourselves. You need to, you need to do what they say and leave, you know, for your own sake. So this compel is going to be with heart. We share a bond. So it's going to be another uh, plus two. Um, so that's going to be a, uh, yeah, a heart plus two. Maybe a pretty good chance. Okay, look, got uh, an 11 again, which 10 really, um, against a two and a five. So that's a success. All right, great. Um, I think that we explained to them what we saw. Matic is with us. He can, he can vouch for it all. I can show them my healing basilisk scars. Um, we can explain to them, you know, look, you, you just got to, you got to. And then we can also maybe say, you know, and, you know, Elfbrook, you know, it's, it's, it's small right now, but they could use the people, strength and numbers. It's the way to go. It's further from the elf, you know, the border. So I think, you know, that's what we, we tell everyone. Um, so on a strong hit for compel, they'll do what you want or share what they know. Take plus one momentum. All right. So another, I've got my max momentum at that right now. Look at that, 10. That's pretty great. Okay. So... I think now that means we can mark progress on our, uh, it's a milestone of, of our vow for sure. Um, so this is dangerous quest. So we're marking two, uh, that's good news. All right. So now we just have to say, okay, now we have to travel to Elfbrook. Now I think if it were just Katya and Matic and I traveling, that would only be a troublesome journey, but because we're trying to travel a whole bunch of people together, I think that makes it um, slower going. It's going to be a troublesome journey. So, like, let's uh, get rid of that one, and now we are adding um, journey 
with the citizens of Frost to Elf Brook. Okay, and that's going to be a dangerous journey. All right, so um, we are going to be undertaking a journey. We have a, we're setting out from a community with which we have a bond. So we're going to be rolling plus wits uh, with plus two. And uh, let's, let's get going. And uh, hope that's keep, we can keep this momentum uh, high and uh, keep us going strong. All right, great. Strong hit right off the bat with an eight against a six and a five. So that is a good first start. I'm just sorry, I keep getting uh, notifications on my phone. Okay, so the um, we're going to make progress. Um, let's find a waypoint. Um, you know, you know what? I think this is not an important waypoint. We're just making progress. We'll establish waypoints if we start having difficulty. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's just keep the uh, momentum going and uh, try that wits again. This time without the extra bonded uh, bonus. Uh, so um, that's a five against a one and a ten. And unfortunately, we can't make that weak hit any better because of that 10. So on Undertake a Journey with a weak hit, uh, you reach a waypoint and mark progress, but suffer one minus one supply. Okay, that's not bad. All right, so let's mark progress again. Doop, doop, but we minus one supply. All right, so let's... Um, let's maybe make camp at this point for the night and, uh, we're going to, you know, rest and recover with the whole group together. And, uh, and I think also, um, yeah, I'm going to just roll that plus supply. Okay, there we go. Um, so it's a weak hit, um, but I could burn momentum to make it a strong hit. But in this case, I think I probably won't do that because the difference between a strong hit and a weak hit for make camp is just getting a little extra bonuses. But um, I think I would rather save that momentum for a more critical, um, more important role. So instead of taking two, we just take one from the list of take plus one health, plus one spirit, plus one momentum, or went, get a plus one for the next undertake a journey. I think I'll take that when you break camp, add plus one when you undertake a journey. So the next morning we break camp. We're undertaking a journey again. That's a, a wits. And then this time we get a plus one from our camp. All right, that's a seven against a one and an eight, which is another weak hit but we could um, burn the momentum again. But again, in this case, I think the difference between a weak hit and a strong hit, we can accept, I would rather, I would rather accept the um, minus one supply than lose all my 10 momentum, which is really, that's keeping that for something that's really important seems better. So I lose one, uh, one more supply there, but maybe now, Let's try doing a resupply roll. So when you hunt, forage, or scavenge, roll plus wits. Because if I burn momentum, it automatically goes down to, um, down to all the way down to two. It's losing eight momentum for that. Okay, so this is a three against a six and a ten for that resupply. So it's a miss. If I burn the momentum, it still only makes it a weak hit. So let's look at what happens there. On a miss, I find nothing helpful and I have to pay the price. If it was a weak hit, I would have to spend momentum to get supply. And that's really not going to help me here because I'd have to burn momentum even... Um, uh, I'd have to burn momentum even to get there. Ah, uh, hey! Uh, welcome, Wolves Dad. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, continuing. I kind of meant to be doing it sooner than this, but 
Uh, I've been sick for the last week, which uh, made it hard to talk. But uh, definitely enjoying it. It's going better this session. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so I don't think I want to burn the momentum there, but I'm going to have to pay the price now. So let's look at the pay the price table. Um, there's not necessarily an obvious negative outcome. Um, let's say, let's imagine two negative outcomes. Um, one is that maybe I, you know, take another tumble or, or get hurt, minorly hurt, um, um, or it's just stressful. So how, how about this? Um, Yeah, let's say that it's most likely that it would just be like stressful, that we're not finding anything. Um, but the alternative, like the, we're gonna ask the Oracle, and so 26 or higher, it's stressful. If it's uh, better, you know, if it's, it's one to 25, um, we are attacked by um, an animal. All right, so. Let's find out. Okay, 88. So the more likely outcome, it's just stressful. So we're going to take one, one hit to spirit. Uh, gets us down to a plus three. So now we're going to endure stress. And we're going to roll that plus three spirit. Uh, all right, look at that. So we got a weak hit, which would basically mean nothing else happens. Just we lost the spirit and that's it. We could burn the momentum to get a strong hit. Um, and if we did that, we would, um, we could, eat, you know, take an additional plus one momentum. That wouldn't make any sense. I don't think it makes sense to burn as much momentum as we have for something that isn't this critical. So I think we just accept, uh, accept the, uh, we, we press on. So we didn't get any more supply though. Um, so let's go ahead and just, um, you know, uh, continue undertaking our journey. We want to keep just trying to make it further. All right. Okay. So that's a three against a three and a five. Um, we could turn this, that, so that would be a miss, but burning the momentum could take it, turn it into a strong hit. So let's look at that. So a miss for our journey means we are waylaid by a perilous event or on a strong hit, um, we make progress again, um, and we do avoid a perilous event. <clears throat> you know what? Um, gosh, waylaid by a perilous event, pay the price. That could be really bad, right? Like, you know, we've seen that table has a lot of different things in it. Um, no, no, still not critical. I feel like it, it needs to be a really important one. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is that, like, the whole point of having the momentum is to burn it when you need it, right? And now that I've got it, I'm hoarding it. Um, I think, yeah, you know what? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn it. I'm gonna, you know, just, you know, we want to get uh, where we're going. So we make another waypoint, burn the momentum. Now we're at six out of 10 on our journey there. Um, so I don't have all of that glorious built up momentum. Might have to try to, you know, try again and uh, to get to a point where we can, uh, you know, try to, let's try to secure an advantage by, um, didn't go well last time due to the fire, forest fire scar, but let's try uh, you know, Katya and I talking about the territory, trying to dis discern the best path forward, going to roll to uh, secure an advantage again. This would be uh, wits uh, to, you know, by discussing the territory. And then I'm also going to try secure an advantage by talking with all the people again, and that'll be a plus heart. 
Okay, look at that. So we only got a three, which is as low as we could go, but it's against a two and a one, so it's still a strong hit. All right, you know, hey, sometimes you get lucky. Um, okay, so on a strong hit with secure and advantage, you take control and make another move now and add a plus one or take plus two momentum. Um, so I think I'll take that, start building my momentum back up. That's the whole reason I was doing it. But now I'm also rolling um, secure and advantage with heart where I'm talking to everybody about like, you know, keep it together, stay close. We're all going to make it here together. Uh, thanks, Prince Justin. Prince Justin, it was uh, glad to have you along. Um, so let's do that heart roll. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, but that one's a miss. So that's a seven against a seven and a ten. Okay, so that one doesn't go so well. Um, so on a miss, you fail or your assumptions that betray you pay the price. Okay, well, so let's pay the price. Um, Hmm. Maybe this tests the bond with uh, Talus. Yeah, I think that's what it does is that they're starting to maybe grumble. Um, they're maybe not sure. Uh, now they're starting to doubt that I'm the right person to get them there. So this is going to be, um, you know, when, when your bond is tested through conflict, betrayal, or circumstance, roll plus heart. Um, all right, so... This happened once before with uh, Katya, and it worked out fine in the end. But, uh, yeah, let's roll plus heart testing this bond with Talus. Oh, look, we got a 9 against a 6 and a 5, so that's a strong hit. That's great, because on a strong hit with test your bond, this test has strengthened your bond. Choose one, take plus one spirit or plus two momentum. Yay. My spirit's only three, which could be higher. But I want to keep that momentum, so I'm going to keep build that up to plus six. Okay, so now we're uh, going to undertake the journey and try to get a little bit uh, further along in this uh, in this journey to Elfbrook. Uh, all right, uh, so undertake the journey is wits. Okay, that's a five against a two and a six, which is a weak hit, which means on Undertake a Journey, weak hit is you reach your waypoint, mark progress, but another minus one supply. Okay, so supply's down to plus two now, which is not great, but we're almost there. So, in fact, we mark progress again. That's another two boxes. Now we're at eight out of ten, which is pretty good. Like, we could make it almost guaranteed by doing it one more time, or we could try undertaking, you know, complete, reach your destination. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and try to reach our destination now. And we'll see how that goes. So we're going to roll a progress track um, for a journey with the citizens of Frosted to Elfbrook. Okay, so... We got an eight, but the challenge dice were a three and an eight, which means it's a weak hit, which means that on a weak hit, you arrive but face an unforeseen hazard or complication. Envision what you find. Okay, so I think that we're going to find we arrive at Elfbrook with some other pre-existing like trouble going on, and there's actually an oracle table for settlement trouble. So let's roll on that to see what... Elfbrook is dealing with as we um, yeah oh hmm so I could just roll but here's another question I thought about instead of just constantly branching all of these different complicating um, things on to everything starting to connect dots rather than only add more dots what if the new trouble is that the illness that the people of Greyhope have has now spread to Elfbrook 
So we've just arrived with the people of Froststead, but the people of Elfbrook have sickness. Okay, yeah, no, I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. Okay, so... So we've arrived, but... Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so this ties back into some of the stuff that we had done in the first session. Let's talk about that a little bit. First, let me update our adventure journal. Um, uh, I reconnected with Talus and we forged a bond together that had been unstable before. With him, we persuaded the people of Froststead to accompany us to Elf Brook because it was too dangerous to try to stand against the elves on their own. On the way, some foul moods almost caused Talus and I to get into a fight right in front of everybody. But we eventually settled things at an even better state. When we arrived in Elfbrook, however, a new challenge presented itself. We had the sickness we had found in Grey Hope had now made its way to Elfbrook. All right, so now here's where we have to try to talk about the, what that means a little bit because the sickness in Grey Hope we established in the first session was killing a bunch of people, but some people survived it, including Katya. But the people who survive it end up with like disfiguring scars. But they also maybe end up with strange, unnatural strength, which we haven't really explored very much with Katya. I think she's maybe afraid of it. But what that means is that the people of Elfbrook, like, it might only be if they are also treated with the flowering plants that we know were on, on Messias's hill. So I think that that is probably the best chance. Like, my herbalism nature knows that it's probably the best chance to try to treat as many of the people in Elfbrook as possible. So how about this? This complication means I'm going to try first, uh, first I'm going to try to compel the people of Elfbrook to not object to the people of Frosted showing up. And I'm going to have to do a new compel against the people of Froststead that they should stay here um, and we can take care of the sickness. Um, but that my goal will be um, that I'm going to need to maybe swear a new iron vow to go get some of those herbs to try to treat everyone. So let's see if I can complete this one. Um, and maybe I'll do that other vow um, if I need to. 
uh, as an additional difficulty. So the complication is that I have to compel the people of Frosted to still kind of try to move forward. So let's start there. So compel roll. Um, I'm rolling with heart and plus, and it's, uh, I get to add plus two because I do share a bond with Talus. Uh, so I'm rolling heart plus two. Gives me a pretty good shot. Okay, good. So, oh, 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 see, that's a that's still just a weak hit, though, because it's an 11, which would be a strong hit against 10 and 5, but per the rules, it really can only be as high as 10. So what that means is that it's a weak hit because it's not higher than 10, but it is higher than 5. So for compel, a weak hit says they ask something of you in return, and I think what that is is they want me to swear an iron vow to go get the medicine that can help treat this illness. And we know from the last session that there is a bunch of it growing up on Messiah's Hill. So I think the they're going to do it if I swear this vow. <clears throat> so I'm going to swear an iron vow um, to get enough medicine to treat uh, everyone in Elfbrook. So on this one, yeah, so if I'm making it to the people that I share a bond with, so it's another heart plus two roll. And I'm making this to the, um, okay, so that's a strong hit. Great, great. Okay, so the swear and iron vow roll. On a strong hit, you are emboldened. It is clear what you must do next. Take plus two momentum. All right, so I get got my plus eight momentum now, uh, but I'm adding a new iron vow. I'm going to say this is a troublesome one. Bring back enough medicine for Elf Brook plus um, new um, Froststead uh, immigrants. All right. That's a pretty straightforward quest of like journey to the hill, collect the medicine, come back, right? Um, yeah, okay. And so that's going to be troublesome, but I did the vow. All right, so now though, I have to go try to persuade uh, the, the people of Elfbrook, um, to, oh, so first I made progress. Let me, cause I got them to Elfbrook. So let's add the make progress on this quest. But now I have to help persuade the people of Elfbrook to accept them. And I don't have an existing bond there with them. And in fact, I have some people that were slightly awkward. So let's look about at what we said about Elfbrook the last time we were here. It's located on a barren moor. The people are intolerant, young, and confident, um, and now sick. A ramshackle community of mostly young people who rejected the ways of their elders but haven't really figured out what their own new ways are. They have they've decided to reject old traditions regardless of whether they might still be wise to follow. Not ideal. We, we met Sabine, who is a dancer, um, who is talented and doomed. And Abella, a herder, who uh, turned out to be really interested in occult rituals. And that makes me wonder if there's something tied to this disease again now. So, hmm, maybe we'll figure something out there. But um, so I think coming back in... Um, I'm going to, I, I'm going to try to that, that sequence that worked well in Frosted first, you know, I'm going to come, I'm going to have the people of Frosted still stay out of town for now. I'm going to try to find Sabine first and say, and try to figure out first, are they sick or no? Cause I think I probably have enough medicine to treat like one person. Um, but that's, so let's see, let's, uh, let's roll, uh, ask the Oracle if Sabine is sick. Um, and we'll say um, there's only a few people sick so far, so it's n less likely that 
that Sabine is sick. And so Sabine is not yet sick, but probably aware that there are some people who are sick. And because this place is rejecting all the old traditions, they're not quarantining, and so it seems likely to spread quickly. But I'm going to go to Sabine, and I'm going to basically tell Sabine, uh, look, I came back through. Here's what's going to need to happen is that um, uh, I'm, I'm going to just try to Oh, let's see, compel them to hear me out after the last time. So I'm going to need to do that and then try to forge a bond. So first compel against just Sabine. Um, and I don't have a bond, so it's just straight up heart. This is just to try to see if I can connect with them enough to try to forge a bond, try to talk with them about everything that's happening. Okay, so that's a weak hit. Um, what can I do? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, so weak hit on compel you, they'll do it, but you have to, um, you have to, uh, tell them they, they need something else from you right away, um, before they'll do it. Um, I think what we established from Elfbrook, uh, from Sabine before is that they are always looking to secure provisions. So I think what I do is I give them one supply. <laughs> Um, but uh, that makes them happy. So let's have, let's try to forge that bond now. So forge a bond is another plus one heart or just a plus heart. Okay. It's a weak hit. So a weak hit on a weak hit. This, they ask something more of you. Um, you know what? I, I don't think that I can. Um, I, I so I think that they they are gonna. I can maybe do it. Um, um, I I'm gonna. I have to go get the medicine first before I can get the bond. So no no bond there to begin with. Um, but what I'm gonna try to do now is um, secure an advantage with them just to try to see if I can uh, get a little bit more momentum. Uh, I'm going to try to roll that with heart uh, to get to a point where I can say, you know, help me know what to tell everybody to get them to let the people from Frosted uh, come in. Uh, they can help. They're numbers. They're fighters. They can uh, help defend if the elves come. And uh, yeah, so, okay, so that's another weak hit. So that maybe sounds like uh, the the answer is uh, they can't give me any, oh wait, no, weak hit on, get, on secure advantage is um, just plus one momentum. Okay, so I think they're just not very helpful. Sabine is kind of like, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, everyone's kind of different. They won't all want the same thing. Sabine, yeah, just as useless as last time. Um, so at this point, I'm going to just go and try to talk to the people of Elfbrook and say, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to go get medicine for you guys, but... The people in this region need to band together because the elves are making, you know, they're, they're making, uh, they're saying that we're encroaching into their territory. It's not clear exactly where they think their, the line is. Um, there might be more incursions. We're stronger together. You, you need to just uh, bind together and you need to help uh, let these people of Frosted come in and hopefully they can, um, together you can make an even stronger community. And, you know, hey, you guys want to reject all the old traditions. Well, these guys are people who would have been cast out of other places because they're not cool. They're like, they're criminals. They're bandits. Like, isn't that, they're kind of dangerous. It's like taboo, right? You, you guys are into that, right? So, well, we'll see how that goes. So I'm rolling compel. I don't get the bonus for having a bond because I didn't, wasn't able to forge the bond. But let's roll that heart. Eek! We hit. Okay, so um, I think it's again. They're gonna just. They're saying you have to put up your shut up. You have to go get the. You have to go get the medicine first. All right. Well, so um, 
uh, now I think I have to compel the people of Froststead to not force their way in. Um, yeah, to say, can you guys just stay just out of town and not force the issue until I get back? Yeah, this time I can I can do my heart with with the plus two bond. All right. Okay, and that's a strong hit. So I got a 10 against a 9 and a 4. So I was able to persuade the people of Froststead, don't force the issue, let me go get the medicine. It'll be great. <laughs> okay, so leaving behind both of these people, um, I think uh, Katya is going to still come with me. We're going to make a troublesome journey to Messias's Hill, get the medicine, come back. So that's going to be two troublesome journeys. <laughs> okay. Journey to get the medicine. Okay. Um, well, let me un mark all of these. Okay. All right, so I'm undertaking a journey. I'm leaving from a place that do, I do have a bond with, which is the camp of the Froststead people. So I'm undertaking a journey with wits and adding my plus two for the bond. I swear all you people, I'm gonna come back with medicine. And, uh, and I'm just looking back at all of these vows now and just seeing, it's like, see how everything just spirals now? All right, so um, I'm going to, I'm undertaking journey with wits, plus two. Okay, good. That's a seven against a one and a three is a strong hit. So it's off to a good start. Okay, so for a troublesome journey, we mark three boxes, and I think we just kind of keep on going. So let's go ahead and make another wits roll. This time's just straight, and I've got tons of momentum. Um, so that's a four against a nine and a four, which is a miss, but I could turn it into a weak hit. Yeah, I think I will. I think I will turn it into a weak hit. Um, so I'm going to take my reset down to plus two. And go ahead and make progress again. But a weak hit. Oh, shoot. You know what, though? That, I forgot I was down so low on supply. So, because a weak hit on Undertake a Journey. Um... Yeah, I minus one supply. So now I need supplies. So now we're going to try to re uh, forage supplies. All right. Uh, we've made it, you know, a good chunk of the way there. Let's see if we can um, secure an advantage. Um, you know, I'm talking with Katya, who's got the experience. It's like, uh, what sort of game would be the best thing to forage around here? Um, so we're going to... Roll that at secure an advantage. Um, and that's wits. Say what's the best thing to look for. Oh, shoot. That's a miss. Okay. Oh, fudge. All right. So not going well. So on a miss, even with secure advantage, pay the price. All right, let's just roll that D100 on that table and see what happens. Okay, that's a 37 on the pay the price table, which is the current situation worsens. Oh no, worsens. So the current situation worsens. So the current situation was that we were low on supplies, right? Shoot. So I think that the obvious thing, the obvious thing there, which I hate to do, 
is um, it just makes me unprepared. So see, again, like this was actually, let me double check because it marked unprepared already. Let me make sure that that how that works compared to the like wounded and stuff like that, because if I'm already unprepared from just going to zero, um, I want to make sure that, um, it, because I was going to basically mark that as the pay the price, but I want to make sure that, um, if it's supposed to already be marked, then I don't want, I can't use that. Okay, so, um, okay. Um, okay, is marked when you are out of supply, when you are at zero supply and are out of supply, 90, page 97. Okay, um, out of supply. So I feel like, mm, so when your supply moves, when your fl supply falls to zero, all characters make the out of supply move. So let's do that now. Out of supply. When your supply is exhausted, reduced to zero, mark unprepared. Okay, yeah. So when you suffer additional supply while unprepared, you must exchange each additional supply for a combination of health, spirit, or momentum is appropriate. So I think makes makes it worsens than I think it just, you know, will say the equivalent of losing an additional supply will lose uh, momentum. Um, actually, let's lose, yeah, let's, let's lose um, a momentum, yeah. Um, but what's really bad about this being unprepared is that it actually means that we can't um, we can't regain supply until we can um, sojourn again. I think. <clears throat> yeah. So the unprepared requires us to score a hit on the sojourn move. So that means we're going to have trouble um, where we have less maximum uh, momentum that we can get. We are going to reset to a lower position. Um, we can't do the make camp move. Um, yeah, that's, it's definitely not ideal. And to, we would need to go back to, uh, you know, a place to, uh, to fix it. So uh, I think, yeah, we're just going to have to try to soldier on, although that's not good news for us. So let's go ahead and try to, um, you know, so we can't, we can't resupply. So we're just going to, yeah, we're, we're just going to have to keep trying to soldier on. So we're going to uh, roll wits to try to keep going. Okay, that's a seven against a ten and a two which is a weak hit, but because we cannot take, because we cannot lose a supply, we're going to lose another momentum. All right. So we can't fix the supply thing, but we need to try to fix the momentum thing because a negative momentum starts being really bad. Um, so let's try to secure an advantage and try to say, okay, um, we're, we're not far from where we need to be. Um, we don't have proper supplies, but is there some forage stuff that we can sort of make do with, um, that, you know, won't really count, but, you know, will get us through the night and, uh, yeah, let's try, uh, securing an advantage. You know, you know what, actually, let's just try to say, Katya, you and I have been through worse than this. We're going to get through this together too. Um, and so just that you and me, we're, we're going to get through this too. And we're going to just try to gain a little bit more momentum here with securing advantage with heart. Oh no. Okay. So yeah, this is suddenly starting to go bad. 
Uh, okay, we got a seven against an eight and a ten, which is a miss. So a miss on secure an advantage is pay the price. So let's roll a 1D hundred. Pay the price. Uh, it's a 22. Uh, let's see, where's that pay the price table? 22 is your action has an unintended effect. What does that mean? Unintended effect when I'm trying to just... Mm. So we're trying to get the medicine to treat the others the way they treated her. Maybe she's actually like, and I'm trying to sort of just bolster her spirits about it. Maybe it kind of reveals that she's starting to feel like she's not sure it's the right thing to do. Like the strange strength that she's had, she's still scared of it. And maybe, um, maybe she's starting to, to doubt what we're doing. Um, hmm. I think, you know what, I'm just going to treat that as being like stressful. That's a, that's, we're going to take minus one spirit, which we're starting to get low there and do the endure stress move, which is a plus heart, um, roll, um, that, uh, she's starting to get discouraged, but we got a strong hit. So, um, yeah, so like basically it was like even, you know, it was stressful that she's starting to question whether we're even doing the right thing. And it's stressful for us to just wonder like, what is actually going on with her? So, but on a strong hit, we can either, we can take plus one momentum. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we just do that. Take plus one momentum. All right, so. Um, that gets us to, um, we we're hoping to just build a little more momentum with that, but I guess we just try to get a little further rolling, you know, continuing to the journey here. Okay. So that's a little better. So that's a strong hit seven against two and five. So, uh, we are going to make progress again on the journey to the hill. And that's with a nine out of 10. So I think we're going to try to uh, arrive uh, at our destination. Uh, reach your destination progress moves. So I'm rolling that. And that's a nine against an eight and five, which means that we, uh, that's a strong hit on our reach the destination move. So on a strong hit, we can make another move now with a plus one or take plus one momentum. I think I'm going to take plus one momentum. Now we're having us up at that plus two. And now the goal is, um, and, and that's also progress. We reached the hill, our destination, right? So we're going to uh, mark progress for our quest. And then I think we're going to um, elf Brook, we're going to have to do, um, we're going to do a wits, uh, I think a face danger roll makes the most sense to try to gather as much, um, you know, to gather as much medicine as we need. I don't know. Should, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, yeah. Um, I think, hmm, I'm trying to remember how it works with the, um, so when you're fighting, I'm trying to think if like a progress, let's, yeah, so let's, let's add a progress track to gathering the medicine, but I'm going to treat it like a combat one. And so in a, in a, in a, in a combat, when you're, 
when you're fighting uh, a troublesome enemy, three progress per harm. So I'm going to treat it like, um, let's say uh, we're going to do face danger with wits. And then, <coughs> yeah, and so we're, yeah, uh, I think that's just what we're going to do. And so a success, like a hit, counts for three. And then we're going to try to say we have enough with an end of the fight. Um, you know, or do a progress roll when we think we have enough. I think that works. Okay, but it's wits definitely to, um, to try to do it. So let's do wits. Okay, we got a five against a three and a two. That's a strong hit. So we've, we've gathered some of our medicine. And with a strong hit, on according to face danger, uh, you gain plus one momentum as well. Start to build that back up. All right, so let's try that again. It's gathering more of the medicine. Okay, that's a weak hit. So a weak hit with face danger you succeed, but for a troublesome cost, we can either suffer minus one momentum, endure harm, endure stress, or suffer minus one supply. Well, suffer minus one supply we can't do. Um, let's mark the progress. Um, I guess I'm going to suffer minus one harm, or, you know, uh, minus one health and do endure harm. Um, endure harm with rolling health. That's a strong hit with my endure harm. So endure harm on a strong hit. I can exchange minus one momentum and get the health back or not, or, or embrace the pain, take plus one momentum, which is definitely what I'm going to do. All right, one more. Let's see if we can get one more. Okay, that's an eight against a three and a four. So we have gathered nine boxes worth of the medicine. Let's do a progress roll to see if that's enough. Okay, so it's a nine, but it's gonna uh, against a one and a nine, which means it's a weak hit. So what does that mean in this context? Um. So if this was like a journey, we, reaching a destination would be uh, a weak hit is there's enough, but there's an unforeseen hazard or complication. So yeah, let's, let's ask the oracle what that might be. Let's do uh, some rolls that we haven't uh, done much of this time, which is do one roll on action and one roll on theme, which actually gives this kind of like a verb and a, and a, and a noun. So we're going to do two D hundreds. So that's a 76 and a 72. So on those tables, uh, action 76 betray and then 72 betray power. Oh, oh no, because horrible, horrible thing there is Katya, we've been worried a little bit that this strength that she has is a little bit scary. What if it starts to overtake her a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. Gosh, so what does that mean? So we've gotten enough. Let's first go ahead and take care of. We are going to clear this track because we've got enough medicine and so I'm going to mark the progress on on that um, quest so we got the medicine but now but now Katya is starting to act funny like she's starting to you know starting to act like you're not taking the medicine back to them. It belongs to me. 
It all belongs to me. You don't get to take it back to them and to give it to those weaklings. Um, and she's starting to just talk crazy. And so I think what I'm going to have to try to do is, um, I think I'm going to have to face danger first that she's going to like try to take a swing at me and start trying to hurt me. Um, yeah, I think that's what happens first is that I have to, you know, first face danger and, um, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to just say, I'm just going to try to tough it out. And it's like, Katya, you trust me, you know me, this isn't you. So I'm going to face danger with heart. Um, yeah, with charm, loyalty, or courage. Okay, that's a four against a two and an eight, so that's a weak hit. So what that means is that um, I succeed but face a troublesome cost. I think what that means is that, like, I, I take the hit, basically. I let her just, I let her hit me, but I'm trying to, you know, uh, just not give away that anything's going wrong. So I think what I'm going to try to do, first I have to, I have to roll, um, I have to do the endure harm again. So my health, roll health or iron, whichever is higher, and they're the same now. So let's roll it for endure harm. That's a strong hit. Okay. So I can get another plus one momentum by embracing the pain. Um, but this is where I'm going to, um, I faced the danger and now I'm going to try to compel her to calm down and, and, and talk to me, get rid of what is going on with you, try to fight that influence. And we're going to figure this out together. We have the bond. We've been through so much. So I'm rolling this heart and I'm compelling and I do share a bond. So I'm asking uh, and adding plus two. Okay, that's a 10, but it's against a 1 and a 10. So it's still only a weak hit. Okay, so what do I have to do? So on a compel, a weak hit is as above, but they ask something of you in return. Envision what they want. Ask the oracle. What she wants is help me figure out what's happening to me and fix it, especially if we're about to bring more of this medicine back and maybe do this to more people. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to swear a new iron vow to, uh, to Katya to try to figure, you know, help her with whatever's happening to her. And I think that's probably I think that's a that's that's a more significant one. I think that's that's a big deal, Val. Um, because I don't know anything about it right now. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is going to be. Help, Katya, with the with this strange curse. That's going to be formidable. All right. Um, because we don't know for sure that just the sickness plus the medicine does it, but you know, um, so yeah, I'm going to now try to swear the iron vow. I do have the bond with them. So this is another heart plus two. Okay, that's a weak hit. So I'm getting a lot of weak hits here. Um, okay, on a weak hit, um, I'm determined, but begin the quest with more questions than answers. Yeah, plus my, uh, one momentum and uh, envision what you do to find a path forward. So yeah, I think we're going to have to... I take the plus one momentum, got a new vow. Um, we're going to have to figure out what's next. I don't know yet. We're going to have to find out. Uh, okay, but in the meantime, let's try to get the medicine back because, you know, whatever's happening to her, 
could be bad, but it's probably better than dying of the plague. So let's, we've got the medicine. Let's try to make it back to Elfbrook. So uh, we're unprepared, but we've got the medicine. Uh, we're going to try to make uh, progress. We're not setting out from a community, though, so just, just a wits roll. Okay, so that's a six against a nine and a one, which is a weak hit, which means we don't have the supply to lose. We're going to lose momentum instead, but we make progress. That's not so bad. And now, um, all right, yeah, let's just keep trying to hurry back. You know, traveling at night. Okay, and then we got a an eight against a five and a one, so that's a strong hit. Strong hit on Undertake a Journey. Um, you reach waypoint, you make good progress. Um, and we can't, we can't do the, the other thing, so we just make progress. Okay. So, so far so good. All right, and let's just try to make it all the way back. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, so we got a weak hit that time. We're going to lose that in another momentum which we can afford it right now because we built it up a bit. And now we've got progress of nine. Let's try to arrive at our destination. All right, that's a nine against seven and one. We reach our destination. It's a strong hit. So strong hit on reach your destination. You can take a plus one momentum, which I'll do. And we have now made it back to Elfbrook with all the medicine. Okay, and so that makes... So, now, for this vow, bring back enough medicine for Elfbrook and the new Frosted immigrants. We've we got nine progress on it, so let's try fulfilling the vow. Um, fulfill your vow, so we're going to try to... Uh, roll this progress tracker. Okay, we got a 9 against a 7 and a 1, which is a strong hit, which is the first officially successful completed vow. Yay, hooray, we did it. Oh, oh my god. Okay, so what that means is on a strong hit, your quest is complete. Mark experience. It was a troublesome, so we just mark 1. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. So that's just one, but we got one. We got one! Yay! <laughs> All right, we got one experience. And also, the... So let's clear that one. And... That was what we had to do to persuade both the citizens of Froststead to come into the town and the people of Elfbrook to accept them. So by doing that, we have now um, marked another progress on this one. So now we've got them all together, but now it's time, we, we st in order to complete that vow, we still have to we still have to get to a point where we can um you know we we still have to try to help them decide how they're going to do this and not just be two groups of people in one place you have to help them decide how they're going to run their their leadership so i think first though let's try you know sojourning with them um, to try to, you know, now that, we, yeah, we're going to sojourn, we're going to try to recover from this whole thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're going to roll heart. We've got the bond, so we're adding plus two. Uh, okay, that's a nine against a one and a two, so it's a strong hit, which on a strong hit, we can clear a condition, so we can equip. 
we can un, uh, clear unprepared and add plus one supply. So there we go. Uh, whoops. Clear unprepared, add plus one supply. Whew. Okay. And then um, because it's, um, we get to pick three of these things because of um, uh, our bond and a strong hit. So we can also, um, we can take another plus two supply. And then let's see, we're pretty low on everything really. Um, I think, yeah, let's get the supply back up to three. So that's two things. And then um, let's get spirit up to four. And then I can do my own healing on myself, um, you know, uh, separate from that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've, uh, you know, gathered ourselves a little bit. I'm going to start preparing the medicine. I'm going to treat myself first. So I'm rolling um, wits uh, or iron, whichever is lower to myself, uh, to try to treat my own injuries. Um, oh, and then uh, my herbalist lets me either add plus two to my roll or gain an additional one when I succeed, um, which I think... Um, I think that I'm going to add plus two to the roll. All right. Oh, look, I got a 10, but it's against a 10 and a nine, which means it's still only a weak hit. Um, okay. So that means that I must su suffer minus one supply or minus one momentum, but I still get the plus two health. Okay, so get the plus two health up to plus four. I'm going to lose some momentum down to plus four instead of plus five. Okay, not so bad. But I need to start also trying to treat the people who are sick. <clears throat> um, and help them. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do... I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start trying to start treat, helping them, um, yeah, let's say they don't necessarily know how to prepare the medicine. Um, I can... show them how so what I'm trying to decide right now is to like make it a progress tracker like to to do the treating yeah I think kind of like gathering I'm going to do I'm going to do a progress tracker of uh, treating the sick oops troublesome. And so I'm going to do my heal move um, with my herbalism and I'm going to keep adding the plus two. And so for each hit, strong hit or weak hit, um, um, I'm going to um, add three progress boxes and then, you know, I'll, I'll do it just like gathering the medicine. So I'm rolling wits, um, plus two. Yeah. Okay. So that's a weak hit, which means, um, either minus one momentum or minus one supply, but I still make the progress. And then Supply just got up to plus three. I can spare the momentum more. All right, so let's do that again. Ooh, okay, that's a miss and a complication. Hmm, maybe, oh, it's a miss and a complication. So a miss 
is going to be the aid is ineffective pay the price so um so we could go a couple of ways here right i think that we could say the obvious pay the price is that some of the people die right like that would be one obvious negative outcome but it could also be that we start seeing the manifestation of some other strangeness happening so let's say the most likely is that it's some you know i i lose some people and that's going to make me have to um test my bond with katya because i'm not showing myself as capable of maybe figuring out what ne what's needing to happen um keep wanting to default to test my bond because I'm good at that mechanically, but okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's say, yeah. So it, the most likely 26 or higher is that just some people die. Um, and it's going to make it harder to, um, I don't, so yeah, I, I don't know if mechanically that really has any effect other than just being sad in the, you know. Okay, so and that's so, but that was the unlikely one. So there's some mystical backlash. There's a mystical backlash table, and so I think we're starting to see some w weirdness happening. Um, so let's roll a one d hundred on this. Uh, When I start trying to treat this this person, um, something else happens. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight on the mystical backlash. Your ritual reveals a surprising and troubling truth. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, so here's part of what I was already thinking. There's a number of combinations of effects that we're seeing right here, right? Is that something's happening to Katya who was sick, got treated with the medicine and got better, but is now afflicted with something else, right? Now it could be that the illness is what did it all by itself and that the medicine has nothing to do with it, right? The medicine just helped her survive as opposed to dying but it's the illness that's bad, right? Or it could be the illness is mundane, but something's weird about the medicine, right? So a surprising and troubling truth. See, I was all prepared to think that wouldn't it be a good thing if the illness was unrelated to the medicine? But... What if, what if the medicine, because the alternative is what if the medicine is bad somehow? That seems less likely because the illness is like a known bad thing. Now it still could be the combination. So let's say let's do an oracle roll all right one to 25 is the illness is unrelated to the medicine and so there's there's nothing wrong with the medicine and the illness has some sort of an occult nature 26 through 75 is going to be that it's something about the combination of the two that's the problem. Um, and that 76 to 100 is the illness is ordinary and it's the medicine somehow that is a cult. Now, unfortunately, that gives us a three out of four chance that the medicine 
leads to this this mixed outcome. Yeah, let's still just do that. Uh, so we're rolling 1d100. So it's one out of four chance that it's just the illness and the medicine either can or can't do anything about it. Um, which will resolve if that happens. Two out of four chance, you know, one out, of, you know, 50% chance that um, it's the combination that is causing this strange effect. Um, or one out of four chance that it is the medicine itself that's somehow tainted or impure somehow. Okay, so that's the middle one. Okay, so it's still something about the combination. We are sure now that we see a person who was sick and we are sure now that the treatment with this medicine seems to create some sort of a strange interaction. So I think we need another role on the Mystic Backlash table. Now that we've confirmed that, how did we confirm it? Like what happened right away that showed that happening? Um, yeah, so let's, let's try doing one more role on that Mystic Backlash table. So we've confirmed now that the illness plus this medicine causes some interaction that wasn't present with either of them separately. Wow, 100. I've never rolled a 100 on a percentile dice before. What does that happen on the Mystic uh, Backlash table? 100. Roll twice more on this table, both results occur. If they are the same result, make it worse. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Uh, 53 and 30. 53 and 30. 53 is you suffer the loss of a sense for several hours. Yikes. And 30 is you hear ghostly voices whispering of dark portents. Okay. Yeah. Um, gosh, what sense though? Um, yeah. So, oh, I, well, let's say it's got to be hearing, right? Because, like, I'm hearing only the whispers and not anything else that's actually around me. Gosh, I've got a lot of stuff to catch up on in the journal here. Let's start putting some of this in here. It's the last thing we had on the, on the journal. Let's see. Um, okay, the si sickness. Um, we persuaded... So the last thing we had said is we had arrived in Elfbrook, but now there's sickness here too. So we persuaded both sides to a temporary stalemate while we went to retrieve medicine from from Messiah's Hill um, uh, on the way it's like once we arrived arrived at the hill we began collecting the medicine only for Katya to suddenly turn on me as though she were possessed. Um, I was able to talk her down, but it was startling for both of us and concerning for both of us. What was this strange affliction she now suffered? And were we going to be afflicting the ill in Elfbrook the same way? I swore a vow to Katya to find a solution. Um, 
we returned quickly to Elfbrook to Elfbrook and with the medicine in tow we persuaded the peoples of Elfbrook and Froststead that they were stronger together. There were still a lot of sick people though. Sick people. So I began treating them only to have one such treatment go horribly wrong. Um, as soon as I applied the herbs, ghostly voices started whispering in my head so loud that I could hear nothing else for hours. All right, so, but what did they say, right? Dark portents is what it's the, the thing said. Um, dark portents. So let's ask the oracle what that is. So I'm going to do an action and a theme and a settlement trouble and a major plot twist. Yeah. So that's going to be four D100s. All right, so let's look at those portents. Find out what these whispers are whispering about. So action and theme, so it's going to be 13 and 82. Surrender enemy. Surrender enemy. Surrender enemy. And then 56 for settlement trouble. Fifty six for settlement trouble. Attack is imminent. Oh no. <laughs> Attack is imminent. And then major plot twist was the last one. Okay, and then that's gonna be sixty five on that table. The true enemy is revealed. The true enemy is revealed. Hmm, okay. Oh, okay. Surrender enemy, attack is imminent, the true enemy is revealed. So until that last bit, I was thinking, oh my gosh, have the elves followed us all the way here? Do they are are they gonna start saying Humans are not welcome anywhere in the Ironlands. Is that what's happening? Are they telling us to surrender? Are they coming here? But then the true enemy is revealed. Makes it sound like maybe it's not the elves after all. Like the elves told the people of Grimland and Frostead to leave, but maybe it was for some other reason. True enemy is revealed. Oh no. What does that mean? Okay. Um, so we've got to figure out what's the true enemy, right? If it's not the elves, if it's not the elves, then who is it? It could be humans with occult magic, right? That could tie into the whole disease thing, right? Oh, no. Yeah, what if that's it? Like, what if... What if it's the sickness has turned, like... Oh, 
Okay, I think I love this. Okay. What if the sickness is actually someone doing occult magic, trying, trying to create like an army of zombies? And that the interaction with the medicine is essentially you have a magic illness trying to treat it with mundane but powerful um, medicine creates sort of a like a living zombie as opposed to an undead zombie and so it is something where the conscious mind is not gone and so you can fight against it but otherwise you still have that element of control from the the occult sorcerer okay yeah i think i love that actually um so, and we had previously met in, in, in Elfbrook, Abella, who was interested in a book of occult rituals that was supposed to be in Grimland. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, man. Okay, so I've, I'm pre piecing all of this together now. So... What if what was really going on is that because the elves sensed the occult magic, that's why they started telling people to leave. But the occult magic was someone in Grimland hoping to try to put together this army of the undead to fight against the elves. And so, like, the basilisk was really just, like, sent there to sort of patrol like the left behind city but the reason it was actually empty is because it's been led to another place like here and so attack is imminent because the zombies are coming here and Elfbrook is now going to be attacked plus all of the people here who are already sick oh god that's that's terrible and awful and I love it okay um Okay, so how do we, so I'm, I've spun a lot of stuff out, like what, what of that would my character really know? Like, because the ominous whispers could have just been, like, as I'm treating this one person, as they were laying about to die, I hear the voices and they're just telling me, um, you know, the people of Grim Hope. All right, like, or what I what I'm hearing is is the voices of the people who have been enslaved by this undead magic. I'm hearing like their voices shouting out like that they can't hear, and they're saying like, "Mayor, what's his face did this to us? Um, help us! I can't control myself." Oh no. Yeah. Okay. I hear their voices. All the people of Grimland enslaved to some occult magic by a sorcerer marching toward us right now. Okay. Well, gosh, okay, so that is a horrifying thing to have to deal with right away, but let's talk about what is going to, what that also means though, right? Um, um, it, uh, <laughs> okay, so, um, it tells us a little bit more about helping Katya with the strange curse. So I'm going to mark um, a, one box of progress on that. It doesn't necessarily cure her, but it, at least we know a little bit more about what's going on. Um, it actually no, tells us uh, this uh, reach an agreement with Grimland, like the finding out what the deal with all those people was. 
Um, I'm going to mark progress on, on that one as well, because now we know what, where they are and what's happening and they're coming our way. Gosh. Okay. Um, uh, so now I think that we have to, I have to desperately try to rally, um, rally the people of Elfbrook and Frosted to try to fight off this wave of, of zombies. Okay. I'm actually really excited because there is a move that I haven't really made, uh, done much with and it's called battle. And the idea is when you want to sort of montage a much larger conflict. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's see. When you fight a battle and it happens in a blur, envision your objective and roll. Um, yeah, so I think that we're, you know, just, I think we're going to wrap the session tonight with just saying the objective in this particular case is only just to not be overwhelmed, to fend off the attack of zombies, which is imminent, and um, just uh, just to basically like fend them off and not be overrun. Like we're not necessarily going to annihilate the army, but it will be forced to retreat into the wilderness somewhere. All right. So when we're uh, we fight, depending on your courage, allies or companions, roll plus heart. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And so um, the zombies are attacking us. Going to roll plus heart, see if we can um, survive. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, so it's a miss. It's a four against an eight and a seven. So in the battle move, on a miss, you are defeated and the objective is lost to you. Pay the price. So I think the way we're going to interpret this... <laughs> The way we're going to interpret this is um, that the town is overrun. I'm going to say Katya and I, and maybe Matic, since we, Matic and Talos. Yeah, we're going to have our own little party here. You know what? Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to just, I'm going to have to do a separate role just to see of each of those people if like, if they survive also, right? Um, so the town is gone. Um, like the town is overrun. Um, but do I escape? Um, or gosh, though, would I, would I flee? Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I think at some point, even if I'm leading the charge and I'm not I'm not abandoning the townsfolk, but if I see that the battle is lost, I would try to persuade everyone that we have to flee and, and give up the town. So I think that's, you know, so I think we have some small group of people that all sort of scatter into the wilderness. And I think, I think I stay with Katya because, um, you know, I've, I've sworn this vow to her. It's important to me. I wouldn't leave her behind, but everyone else, I think, you know, it would be one thing to sort of let, um, let them all, uh, you know, scatter. Um, but what this also means though, is, um, I'm, so I'm going to roll one more heart to see if I can get Katya out or if I have to leave her behind. Yeah, I mean, this is an, an, one more heart roll. If I succeed, uh, if I get a hit, I, I get her out with me. And it's a miss. It's a six against a six, 10 and a six. I think I'm forced to leave Katya behind. I get, we get separated and I don't know what happens to her. Oh no. Okay. Um, so gosh, here's the question. This is all gone suddenly terribly at the end. Um, so here's the question. Um, 
incorporate the people of Frosted into Elfbrook. Like, we never actually completed that. Um, I mean, I here's the question, though, is like, you know what? I'm I'm going to... No, I, I cannot, like, even if I rolled the completion and got a, a strong hit, like, you, you know what? Like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to roll it just as it was. Um, I rallied everybody, but unfortunately we weren't able to do it, but I'm going to roll the comp progress completion of the vow, uh, to fulfill the vow that I tried, I did everything I could and it wasn't my fault that there was an army of zombies on the way. Um, just to see if I get the experience from it, even in the fiction, the, it's a de defeat. So let's try it. But so on Fulfill a Vow, let's see what happens. Um, we'll, we'll see how that works out. So we're rolling that, and that's a six against a six and a nine. So it's a miss. Your quest is undone. Envision what happens. We know what happens. And I have to choose one. Either I recommit, which would be cleared all but one filled, uh, progress, raise the quest rank by one, if not already epic. I, I think I, I have to just clear that one. It's, it's, it's undone. There's nothing to be done with it now. It's ruined. And I have to do the forsake your vow move. When I have to renounce the quest, betray my promise, or the goal is lost to you, clear the vow and endure stress. I suffer minus spirit equal to the rank of the quest. It was dangerous, so that's going to be minus two. Um, and then I have to do the endure stress move. Um, yeah, um, endure stress move. So, um, I'm rolling heart and that's a strong hit. So I think that, um, my momentum is not great. So I'm going to go ahead and Keep that at plus four. Take that plus momentum. Um, take the the spirit hit. But um, but yeah, boy, that's a rough. <laughs> it's a big cliffhanger. Um, okay, so let's add that to the um, uh, the journal here. Um, uh, whoops. Okay. Um, I did my best to rally the people, but it was for naught. Um, there were too many of them. Strange. Um, people with empty eyes, eyes and grasping hands overran the ramshackle defenses. I was even separated from Katya. And I don't know if she's okay or not. But my dream, my promise to unite Elfbrook and Froststead lies in ruins as most of those people have now joined the army of zombies still marching through the wilderness. The wildernesses of the ragged coast. All right. That's a pretty bleak place to end the session, but uh, thumbs the brakes sometimes. That's that's what we get for rolling so well early in the session. <laughs>
anyway, uh, thanks for watching along. Uh, welcome, uh, Wolf's Dad. Uh, I'm glad you got some new ideas. Uh, there's, you know, one of the things I really realized this session was that this game, because of the nature of uh, the mechanics constantly introducing complications, it's easy to keep adding branching complications that don't tie back to anything, and that can start making everything feel scattered. And that's why I kind of made a point to try to have things tie back to each other this time. Yee, boy though. Um, I think the one uh, thing that I'm going to leave uh, trying to you know, hold in my heart though is that my vow to help Katya is not gone. She's, my, she's still out there somewhere, I know it. And um, I'm going to try to figure out how to save her. And so, and, and of course, save everybody from the horde of rampaging zombies. So, yeah, we'll have to see what's going on there. <laughs> All right, but that'll have to wait until next time. So, uh, thanks for watching or listening. And, um, you know, I'll be playing more of this sometime soon. And also check out So Many Levels where we play D&D. &D. And uh, anything else that might be uh, streaming soon. So I'll good night for now.